we're back. Guys, you'll never believe I had such a crazy dream. It was like I started streaming and then something terrible happened and then I had to start streaming all of this stop streaming all of a sudden. Wouldn't that be wild if that happened? That'd be crazy or something. Anyway. <laughs> for anyone that was here for like two seconds, my undo button wasn't working, and I can't draw without an undo button because of how often I make mistakes, so. But he's fixed now, it's okay. We're free. Freedom. We are so back. It's so Jover. I feel so goofy because like I posted the promo and then immediately it was like dead and I'm like, ugh. But it is what it is. Anyway, I was drawing these earlier. I was working on, um, I'm going to redraw our trainer sonas because it's been almost two years since I drew the original drawing of the two of them. Um, but it's also coming on the time where like if Pokemon's going to make a new game, it's probably going to be the Heart Gold Still Silver remakes. Um, and then by extension, gold silver remakes. So I wanted to draw our trainers because they were based off of gold and silver. Um, and because I want Pokemon to give me the rights to the remakes because they're my autism spin. Uh, I have been playing these games since I was 12 and I've played them in, like in a just egregious amount of times. When my first Wacom was thrown across the floor at least three times by my dog and like twice the cord with the cord so it survived so much. Oh yeah, Wacoms are durable, that's for sure. I've dropped mine downstairs or like my... When I was in high school I had one that I like dropped downstairs and stuff and it still worked. Um, not on purpose, mind you. I was just a high schooler and carrying my laptop and tablet around. I still have my first tablet in its box and I intend to frame it one of these days. That's awesome. Okay, I had to reload Twitch. Sorry. Also, yeah, Forrest is in chat. Forrest is baking brownies again. <laughs> He's the brownie guy. We're back. It's party time. It is. I, it's funny, though, because my party, my idea of stream party is, like, very relaxed. I like that our the streams are chill. I think that Forrest is too long. Like, just in terms of body proportions, his trainer sona is just too long. Both of them are too big for the, the thing right now. Oh my god, wait, I wasn't muted, right? Okay, good, no. You guys heard me say brownies. That means that I know that you can hear me. Sorry for the sound of moving the keyboard. Hello? Where's the head? There it is. I have to make them smaller. Become tiny. Yeah, Forrest is just too big. Why is he big? Is his torso longer? Or is he just bigger in general? No. Get out here. I wish there was a way to lock that. I'm sure there is. Like, I'm gonna find it years from now and be like, oh my god. Sorry to everyone, I'm making motion sick by moving the panels around. Alright, you need to come up here, and you need to merge down, and then I'm grabbing you. We do have things to get done tonight. Like, I have plans. I have things that I want to draw. But I did want to finish these because uh, I enjoy drawing our little guys. Oh, but in the meantime, I guess I can show off the other stuff that I have on this canvas. Um, I was drawing, like, the National Park Bug Contest because I really enjoy the bug contest. I think it's, like, one of my favorite parts of the early game in HeartGold SoulSilver. Along with uh, Pokeathlon. Like, Pokeathlon is just so much fun. Um, but, like, if I had to remake the Heart Gold Soul Silver games, I would absolutely hydrate. Okay, 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 okay. Drowning me. Good lord. I'll drink. I'll drink. Yes, I love Togepi. Togepi is so cute. It's probably, like, the Togepi Togekiss line is, like, some of my favorites. Um, but I just didn't have, like, an appreciation for Togepi as much as I do now. Doo -doo -doo. Had to reblog a promo on Tumblr. Um, like, I think it was because Togepi is always so squishy that, like, it frustrated me when I was a kid. Four Leaf Island is underwater because I'm drowning. Where's my audio doing? I really hope it's not my audio. We can't have this many technical issues. 
Boat type is hands down my favorite. Oh, we wait. I don't know if you saw it the other day. I did see the like ed edit actually. I needed to get it to my phone. Hold on, wait, I can click the link on my phone now so I can save it. Oh, thank God. Because I wanted to respond to this, but I had no means of saving it to my TikTok from my laptop. There we go. Now I have it saved so I can see it for later. But I did watch it on my computer and I really liked it. Every people that can make edits of my art, I'm so impressed by because I don't think that my art is not like clean enough to edit. Oh, and then there's another Leica because I was listening to music. And then these little guys who I'm doing for TikTok because I'm going through the process of uh, doing big scale comic pages. So I wanted these for like the in-betweens where I have a bunch of text um, and then Leicas and two road boys. This was like my doodle pad from today. I, I think I started here, and this has been like the last seven hours or so. I've just, just been doing this. <sighs> now I have to open the... carry print. Yeah, so this is one of the things I want to get done tonight. I want to get done the lines for this at the very least. And then... Da -da -da -da. Your art just splashes out of the page with pure joy. That's so sweet! Thank you! And... Where is the Neuburn? There it is. And then I also want to get the lines for this done. I did fix the wings. And I also did a, like, hold on, I have to make the sketchy go away for it to be visible. There we go. I did, like, a test run of the colors, but I'm not sure that I'm, like, the biggest fan of it. Um, do you have any tips for expressions? I've been kind of struggling with them lately. I would say... <sighs> I would say that you should study the media that you enjoy the most and see how they simplify expressions because while studying how like actual human faces emote is important because um let me pull that like a one up again like i had to learn how to draw expressions on human heads before i could translate it to doing more like squishy uh and furry characters uh because when it comes to anthropomorphizing we're making things more human that aren't human, right? So you should know what it looks like on a human being first before you do this. Um, but I'm not gonna tell, come out here and tell you that you need to learn how to draw like anatomically correct jaw, inner teeth, uh, eye, socket, everything, like tongue. Like you don't need to be doing every single row of teeth. Like you can come out here and do more simplified forms. It's just about getting the planes and the shapes of things. And once you get that down, it's so much easier to communicate or like translate that to uh, characters and your own characters, that is. That's one of the reasons why I suggest studying how other people simplify it and specifically like shows or comics that you like simplify forms and faces um, because you can then kind of Frankenstein together a style of expressions. Um, if it's not obvious, like, I love the Pokemon special, sorry, I love the Pokemon art style. I like the Pokemon special art style, even though I've never read Pokemon special, which all of my friends are going to kill me for because I have so many Pokemon special manga friends. Um, the Pokemon manga I read was actually, I think it was called Pokemon Diamond Pearl Adventures. Um, it was one where the main character was drawn, like, like, Hold on, I can draw him from memory. Because I read it when I was like 12. He was drawn... Like this. And uh, instead of being named Diamond, his... I don't remember his name. I think, honestly, you want to say it was like Satoshi or something. Um, and he had like the little pearl cap. Or sorry, like the little cap that Lucas wears. And he, he had Piplup. And his Pokemon was Piplup throughout the entire manga. Except for right at the end when it evolved. And then his rival was named June, but like still Barry's design, just like his, it was June instead of or J June or Jeanne. I can't remember how that would be pronounced personally. Um, and he was drawn like this. And so this and Scott Pilgrim like really influenced my style as a kid. And then for a while, yeah, it kind of was Osamatsu like. I almost wonder if the mangaka had worked on it at one point. This, like, art style really influenced my art style, along with Scott Pilgrim. Like, I'm, I've am i always read and loved Scott Pilgrim, so I was excited to see it was animated. I still haven't watched it because we don't have Netflix, and 
Uh, getting stuff through illicit means onto the TV can be kind of annoying sometimes. Um, but after that, I started to stray from the Scott Pilgrim anime art style because it was in the um, time of my life when people were like, oh, you draw anime? That's cringe because, you know, we were in middle school and so I was like, oh, I guess anime isn't cool, so I have to learn to draw something else. Um, I got really big into Steven Universe and learned how to draw the Steven Universe style, and I think that really helped me with, like, hands and doing bodies that weren't just, like, rail-thin anime girl, like, you know, you know the- you know what it's like. As much as I love anime, unfortunately the body diversity is not always there, if, depending on what you're watching. Um, so, I started watching Steven Universe and that helped with learning some body diversity simplif simplification. And then after that, I started watching like a lot of uh, sign-in anime. So like anime for older audiences. And that I found, I liked the style of a lot because it managed to, I don't like these eyeballs, we're killing them. Get out of here. Get out of here, disgusting. Um, I used to love Diamond and Pearl Adventures. I'm so glad someone else knows what it is because like I tried to read the Pokemon special manga when I was like 12 and I was like, oh, Pokemon manga in Barnes and Noble. I, this is what everyone's telling me to read, right? And then no, it wasn't that. It was something completely different. I used to find anime through the Wikipedia page on Sojo, Shoujo. That's kind of awesome. I've never seen anyone talk about Diamond Pearl Adventure. His name was Heretta. Thank you. I think Satoshi is Ash's name in Japanese, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but after um, Steven Universe sing for a while, I kind of fell out of love with Steven Universe just because I, I don't know. Something about the pacing of the show was hard to keep up with in college. Um, and so because of that, I, hmm, this I would have to be wider, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> I think it's funny because the eye is such a relaxed looking eye, but like the mouth is and the eyebrows would sh like imply surprise. So instead the guy just looks like really scared. Um, hold on, if you, I think if I wanted to make this look like a frightened uh, expression, I would just have to do like the, and honestly, I think the mouth would have to be downturned a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this is- so that's the difference between, uh, surprise and fear, right? It's just, like, the direction that the lips and the mouth- and then you'd have to get, like, the- Oh, now he just looks angry. I love playing with faces like Putty. It's like, how can we ch take something- how can we take this one part of the face and then change it to become something and mean something else? Oh yeah, we gotta make the pu the pupils smaller because your pupils dilate when you're scared. Um, honestly, I think the the irises in general just need to be smaller. But yeah, so after after uh, being in the Steven Universe, I started watching anime again. But I started watching Sinan. I started watching a lot of Satoshi Kon's uh, movies, and he's still like one of my biggest inspirations to this day. And then I got really into, I don't know why this, this guy kind of looks like G-Man. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, uh, along with Satoshi Kon, I got into Junji Ito. And I feel, I've always been reading Junji Ito, like ever since I was a teenager, cause I am a horror head. Um, but I got really, really into him and now I collect his manga. Um, and I think that that's how I started learning to draw more human faces that weren't just like the squishy cutesy anime face but everything that i learned from this translated back over to this because now i can draw more like dynamic expressions within the squishy anime style i don't know wait sorry i don't have fun drawing faces but seeing it as something to mold and experiment with makes it so much more appealing oh yeah i i think facial expressions are like probably my favorite part of art um I say that about like everything though, right? Like I, I find new things to call my favorite once a week, uh, but that's just because I like to draw. <laughs> but I do think that facial expressions will like hold a special spot in my heart because I was going for storyboarding at one point. And because of that, that's like the one thing that I got really, really good at because 
typically speaking, people's faces are on the screen uh, for animations and stuff. Sometimes they're not. And then now I'm trying to think. After after Satoshi Kon's stuff, I started watching Trigger animations, and Trigger has always had these like really bouncy, uh, expressive faces, like that still manage to stay on model for the characters, but they use a lot of squash and stretch. And I think that that was a really big inspiration for Leica's because they, like, I wanted designs that could feel three dimensional, but still, oh my god, drowning! I just turn around and I'm being drowned. <laughs> I'm drinking. Yeah, I love Trigger's animations. Their, their anime, while very beautiful to look at, sometimes not the best, but I do love their animations. And so, studying Trigger, studying uh, Satoshi Kon and Juji Ito, I started to learn how to do more like uh, dimensional and like sort of based in reality human face shapes and stuff like that. And then Chainsaw Man came out, and that just completely turned my art style on its head because I learned how to do complex forms, but like not while not like killing myself or like making it look uncanny valley. Um, and then again, like I said, it all feeds right back into the being able to do the squishy cutesy Pokemon art style because uh, the you know the skills transfer over, and you can learn how to expand on what you already wanted to do with the new things you've learned. Um, that's my little, that's my little plug on doing studies. There we go. Oh my god, Long Dratini! I love, that's by Kale, right? I love their, uh, their pixel art, and I love that little Dratini, I think it's so cute. I think that's by them, right? I just want to be sure I got it right. I hope, um, yes, okay, I thought so. I... I had been following them on Tumblr for a while before I even realized that they did Twitch streams, and I actually started watching... So this is like a whole rabbit hole, right? I didn't used to watch YouTube. My boyfriend and I started dating, and I started watching YouTube Let's Plays and stuff, and streamers, because my boyfriend watched them. And so he introduced me to um, Alpharad, and we started watching Alpharad before we would go to bed at night, along with other people. Like, I never used to watch Markiplier, now I watch Markiplier. Uh, I've been watching um, Jaden Animations and the like. Oh yeah, I love Alpharad. I think he's hilarious. Like, he's really fucking funny. And I don't usually give that... Like, okay, I'm picky. I don't like the loud, like, bah, 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 like uh, Mr. Beast style editing videos. So I think that Alpharad's videos managed to keep my attention while also being like pretty funny. It's also just nice to see some Pokemon love. He is, an, and he does seem like a nice guy. I can't speak, I don't know them personally, but he's fun to watch, he seems like a cool guy. It's nice to have other, like, gay, like queer content creators. Um, I hate, sorry, I hate the word content creator personally, but, like, I, it's nice seeing other gay people, and when I grew up in the era of, like, only guy gamer YouTubers that would say slurs, I would, it's nice to actually be like, oh, that guy's like me and probably wouldn't kill me in an alleyway. Um, <laughs> I say probably because we just, you know, there's always the element of surprise with, with new friends. Um, the way I use YouTube is just watching the same three videos on repeat. I understand. No, it, it's true. Like, right? Like, I don't know. I don't need someone to be queer to enjoy their content at all. Like, I'm so open to watching whoever, but it is at the very least nice to know that someone will just not hate me simply for existing. So, n seeing Alfred's videos and seeing that uh, he was also, that he was a bi guy, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Um, so, long story short, wounds around. We started watching Alpharad together, then we started watching Ross Draws and Giwi. Um, and because of that, that led into watching streams that Smith was on. And I recognized um, there was Smith was streaming and had Kale's little uh, PNG tuber or pixel tuber right next to them. And I was like, wait, is that that pixel artist from Tumblr that I like? And I looked it up, lo and behold, it was. Um, yeah, Rubber Ross. I think Rubber Ross is funny. Apparently, I just watched the Sonic real-time fandoms by Snapcube. I love her <laughs> Sonic adventures. I think that's what it was. I'm not a Sonic guy, but that is the extent of my Sonic knowledge is Penny's uh, <laughs> Sonic video. 
And the amount of times that we in this household, quote, I'm back in the fucking building again. Every, every day, every damn day. I miss my <laughs> wife, Tails. I miss her so much. Yeah, I love, I love the Sonic Adventures videos. I think they're funny. Um, okay, do we show their ankle? Or do we have them wear actual, like, fitted cargo pants for them? Because the original one, I had them wear bunchy socks and uh, sneakers. But I actually think I want to give them properly sized pants this time. Also because I can't make their leg any longer. Give them Victoria Air <laughs> treatment! Well, okay. I hate to say it this way. Um, I don't really want people to see my trainer son and be like the girl and the girl is silver because i'm like i'm not i'm non-binary but like you know i go by any pronouns it's whatever um but i do kind of wish we had a pokemon character or girl pokemon character that were pants or like not at least not a skirt i don't dislike skirts and shorts like i think that they can be really cute designs but also like you know, it's 2024, girls can wear pants, it's alright, so it's like a double-edged sword, it's like, I don't want people to call me a girl, but like, if they must see that and be like, oh my god, a girl in cargo pants? Well, at one point, like, that was true, so it's fine. Oh, thank you for the sub, Hugo Tien, Mil Hugo Tien Milan? I think that's- I'm squinting at my screen because it's like so far away. But either way, thank you for the sub. Sadly, if it's it's not skirts, it's normally shorts. No, exactly. Um, and it's not even, like, it's not the end of the world, right? It's not a bad design choice. I think the character designs are really sweet looking. May is actually probably one of my favorites because she looks like she's dressed to adventure around. Um, and I think Lyra, too. Lyra has overalls, and while they are overall shorts, she definitely looks like she could actually, like, walk. And Chris? I think Chris also has, like, biker shorts. The same with May. Um, but then they, like, as much as I love, um, Dawn's design from Platinum, because I love the coat dress, I, I was just looking at that the other day, and I was like, why didn't they just give her, like, leggings, or, like, pants or something? She's going in the cold! She's in the snow! It is how you say it, just with a small accent. Oh, cool. Okay, good, good, good. I'm always terrified to read someone's username wrong, so I, like, Pause. I, I like pause for a second so I can read it in my head before I said it out loud, especially since some are people's names. Um, yeah, well, she could be built different too. That's what I was gonna say. On one hand, that is just how like kids are, right? Like, they're they're ugh, our kid will go outside in shorts in like 30 degree weather and we have to keep telling him like dude we are going to get cps called on us you cannot be going outside in shorts in the middle of winter and he's like but i don't like pants i don't like the texture and i'm like i understand that and my boyfriend understands that but the, the people that won't understand that are the ladies dropping their kids off to high school who see you outside six feet tall walking around like a giraffe with no pants on your legs while there's snow on the ground and we're gonna get in trouble with the authorities if we let you out of the house without pants. He also goes to a, like a school that like has a dress code and like uniforms which doesn't help. Rosa is one of the few who I think has pants. She's like, uh, stockings. Or, or maybe they're like compression leggings? Oh, posture check. I needed that. Shorts are comfortable and easy to wear. This is true. This is very true. Self-care package. I like how you said it that. It is also something I think teenage boys do to the, do. Those moms need to chill out. Oh yeah, but like, you know, we live in suburbia. Or not actually, we live in the city part of the where we are, but the school is, like, connected to suburbia, and suburban mothers are, like, well, they be no they're nosy. They'll be in everyone's business except their own. And in therapy, but that's another story for another day. I drank. Oh my god, I drank and I almost choked. Teenage boys are like fennec fox ears where they vent heat, and that's why they always wear shorts. That's actually why our kid says that he does it. Um, he says that and he doesn't like the texture, the whole, you know, autism and all that. I actually think that that's one of the other things is I think it's so funny is like, I don't know how to explain autism to another adult who's not autistic, but like, I understand our child because I listen to him and also have autism. So like, I don't know. It, 
you can try to explain it every which way, but like, unless someone's willing to sympathize and get where you're coming from, it's just better to try and like keep your head down and not piss anyone off. You never made any sonas before your streams. I just now made a trainer sona. That's awesome. I love making trainer sonas and like Pokemon OCs. It's very fun for me. Um, I don't know. Even when it's not like an, a self insert, I just think that making Pokemon trainers is really fun because, in a way, a Pokemon team and like a region and like what someone's specialty is is like a personality in its own. Um, it's kind of like with furries, right? Like an animal is such. Ooh, I'm gonna allow it. Oh, someone already did. Perfect. Um, yeah, no, when I was a teen wearing shorts it, when it's snowing and mom freaking out, like, people are going to think I don't clothe you and being like, question mark, question mark. It's literally not cold. It is normal. No, it so, so is. No, it is. And that's the, that's the problem is like, I get where he's coming from. I just can't, I don't want the authorities involved because that did happen, right? Like, not with us, but like with, um, with his mom and then... But before, with um my boyfriend, uh, he would wear like the same jeans over and over again that had holes in them. And someone ca called the school and was like, this child doesn't have clothes. And it's like, hello? Have you never seen ripped jeans? How can I, how I can explain autism to people is like, if your brain was a really picky five-year-old, that's... Oh, hey, Lusa! I just saw that Lusa redeemed Hydrate. Lusa Belorexia is my high school bestie and also a streamer um and we're going to get hot pot this weekend i'm very excited andy is here oh my god the whole apartment apartment roll up my friends tell me that i'm insane for liking jeans oh i i like jeans and dress pants personally oh it was because i wore the same pair well honey i wear the same pair of jeans too because i like the texture of the jeans that I have and I will I literally own multiple pairs of the same pair of jeans because I like that pair of jeans I don't like any other pair of jeans I want the ones that I know what they feel like and I know how they'll fit me and so some people are like didn't you wear those pants yesterday I'm like no it's my other pair that looks is exactly the same as this pair and that sounds like I'm bullshitting but that's just that's just the truth it's um it's like the B movie. It's the B movie opening, except it's me opening my my closet and it's just six pairs of the same light blue jeans. Could never be a trainer. I'd only have little guys and keep them warm and safe. Oh, I have my so this is like my trainer zone of like if I was like a Pokemon trainer and that was like like the game like the game's protagonist esque Pokemon trainer. But I also have uh, a trainer card that I made that I use as like an ID for websites and stuff and my team is like hold on we gotta make it go away I can draw my little trainer because I have like I said my my Pokemon trainer team and then I have my team of like this is realistically what I would own if I was actually in the Pokemon universe um so of course we have you know if you know you know I'm not going anywhere without this thing and then, actually, an unspoken fave of mine that I, like, don't draw very much, but it's, like, still my beloved, is... Well, I guess I draw Ninetales. So, like, basically, just the big version of it. Oh, you could probably hear Harbor in the background, but I'm not keeping a Ninetales around because that thing is huge. And while very pretty, I don't want to get cursed for 900 years if I, like, piss it off and don't give it dinner on time once. So, we keep it baby. And then... Oh, I love Esper. I do like foxes. I like foxes and I like cats. Um, and it's funny because I used to be a dog guy and then I had cats and I was like, oh, this is what I wanted dogs to be for like 20 years before I had a cat. And I know people like um, Psyduck, but, and Psyduck is cute, but he's not my ducky. My ducky is this one. I love Farfetch'd. I think it's so cute. It's like one of my favorite Pokemon. And I, I actually, 
It's funny because I don't hate Galarian Farfetch'd, but I, it's they took his cuteness. They his cuteness is gone. I like when he was around and kind of silly. Um, and then another slept on fave that I have never drawn before for like a big piece that honestly that needs to change is none other but the sleepy dog itself. I just think that Smeargle, ever since that Pokemon short um, with the Pokemon 2000 movie, Smeargle has been one of my favorite Pokemon. I just think it's so silly, and I think that it's cute that it's an artist, so of course I would have it. Um, and I like, before anyone asks, I also like Grafaii, but I think that um, Smeargle is much more suited for me. Smeargle is so cute. Round and Silly is the ultimate Pokemon form, absolutely agree. And then, either it's evolved form, or this i would have hold on i have to i draw it like woodstock and i don't know when that started but like i can't stop now if you can t it's hard to draw just the head for this guy though because it's like so baby um so we're gonna do the whole body but like it's a it's like a little woodstock Togetic. thoughts and his oh his sway and typhlosion is like one of my favorite pokemon i think it's awesome and then the only big guy, which I think is funny. Uh, the reason I have Dragonite on my team while having all of these babies is that uh, Dratini was my first Pokemon card. So I like to think that if I have a Dragonite, the only reason that he's fully evolved is because I've had him since I was four. And so I just had Dratini and Eevee, but then never evolved Eevee because it's not for fighting. And if I ever had to get in a fight, I just whip out the dragon and then run. So it's a bunch of little guys, and then one big guy. The ideal team. Oh, I also love Decidueye. I think that Decidueye and uh, his Swain Typhlosion should hold hands. Like, how can you not like this thing? It's the ultimate fucker. It's like... It's- look at it! It's awesome! I love his little droopy ears, too. I think that it's so funny. He's like if a bear was a dog, and then also a badger, and then also a porcupine. Oh wait, it's got the- it's got the- yeah, it's got these going on instead. I also just like that they make the fire wick, like, much more flowy, instead of, like, the shooty fire that, uh, regu regular Typhlosion has. And I still love regular Typhlosion, don't get me wrong. Look at- it's so awesome. This is like one of my favorite Pokemon. I like that it has like curly butt tail. And then he has like the feet, right? Like the little funny feet. Truly beast of all time. Another hydrate. I will drink. You guys are catching me on the day that I drink like mostly monster today. It smokes weed. It does. He gets stoned every day that ends with day. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Guys, I'm going to throw up if I drink any faster. I'm going to die. Killing me. Drown. <laughs> Why am I drowned? Why did I deserve this? I still think forest is too long. I don't know what happened. He just got longer. There's the... I don't want to be a short stack. Hold on. I have to merge the layers. I mean, I am shorter. Is it actually that we're... Hold on. Is it that I'm not actually shorter, it's just that it's his hand? No, he is also just taller. And if I shrink him anymore, I feel like his proportions are going to be off. assassination attempt was afk for a moment and came back to i think forest is too long willow's the size of a weevil in real life this is not true that's slander i'm average height and also you are tall honey i i do know that but were you tall as a kid because i was like freakishly tall as a child when i was 10 i was the tallest person in my class other than like one guy who was coming up on like 5'7 when we were in 5th grade, which was terrifying by the way, really frightening. We would be playing uh, 
like kickball or something and he would get past and everyone would just move out of the way it's like this is not even a fight worth having it's it was the ability intimidate in real life the pokemon ability so five four is not average I, d I don't know what average is, and I'm scared to find out, actually. I'm going to be living in blissful ignorance and think that I'm average. Don't tell- don't tell me. I was 5'8 when I was 10. What is wrong with you? What do they feed the people in the city? Everyone here is so tall, and I'm so short in comparison. It's sad. There's something in the water that they're giving you, because no- no 10-year-old should be 5'8. That's scary! What were they feeding you? Did you hit doors when you were going out of the kindergarten classroom? Or I guess you weren't kindergarten when you were 10. Oh, people are scary. Also, 5'4 is the average height of AFAT people in the US. Okay, 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 okay. What's, wait, what's the average? Hold on, what, is there like a unisex average? I need to know. I need to know this. <laughs> Five, eight, ten year old. Listen, if you think about it, being short is being tall, but not. That's very wise. I think that's five, seven. So I am average. I'm average. I'm average height. It's C. I'm average. Also, I think I can't tell if his feet look good spaced or if they look. I actually think I got the spacing kind of good. I just think his legs are too big, actually. That's what that's what's going on here, is that all this needs to shrink. And then I need to shrink my feet too. Yeah, that's literally I now we're now we're back. We are so back. It is not over anymore. It's not Jover. Yesterday I went to my endo appointment and apparently I was supposed to be doing three pumps of testo gel and I was like doing one. No wonder I wasn't seeing any changes. Oh, that would be frustrating. Bro, how do you draw shoes so cool? I wish that were me. Uh, by studying Pokemon shoes and by studying Soul Eater's shoes. I, so I did do real life shoe studies for a while and that helped, but ultimately it is down to like learning how to stylize things. Um, and I find that Soul Eater and Pokemon stylize their shoes very nicely. Um, sometimes they make them a little too big and we start getting into, like, uh, like, clown shoe territory. But I think it's always better to start big so you can get the details in and shrink things down. Um, because with shoes, while you don't want to go, like, so detailed that it looks, like, uh, goofy or, like, it's distracting from the rest of the design, shoes do have, like, a few key uh parts that make them up a shoe shoes are kind of like cars like if you can learn how to draw a shoe you can draw a car because they make up they're made up of the same parts right the only difference is that shoes don't have wheels unless they're heelys so they can have wheels chrono did irreparable damage to my gender oh that's so real cupid cupid cry sorry i almost said cupid i almost said cupid -less, like nicholas but cupid and yeah, I'm not reading your message out loud because I'm not doing that to anyone else. Even though you paid points. I'm sorry, I love you, but I'm not making everyone else do it. I have Huey's. Nice. cupid list. Nick, Nick. Lethal Company? Oh, I added more to the Lethal Company doodle that I did. Not this, hold on. Um, because I thought it would be funny. Walking is so exhausting. I agree, but I love it. No, no, not tonight. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, because tonight's art streamies, but tomorrow... Uh, sorry, tonight is art stream. <laughs> Brownies are ready? Did he say that? Or did you hear him in the background? Add me on Steam. I will, Lusa. Lusa was going to say, I want to play when we come to visit, but then I realized that Forrest isn't going to have his computer because he has a uh, desktop set up and I have a laptop. I play on my laptop and it sounds like it's blasting off into space every single time I boot up Lethal. Um, so I really like these Roadboy faces. I think they turn out cute. I started doing something different with his uh, design while doing these that I think really helps. Hold on, I'm going to just like copy these so I can get them on their own layer. 
Also, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like Lusa really likes Lo Road Boy. Like, has you have mentioned. He could use my desktop if he does. Oh, that's true. Have you added Lusa on LinkedIn yet? No, I have not. I hate LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my my enemy. I hate I hate it. It's stupid. I understand that it's important for networking, but I would rather network by talking to people and drawing them for service. Okay, good, good. I just I know you like wolves, so I was like, Luz has gotta like Roboid. Like there, there's another character that you know was like handcrafted for you, uh, because. I love you dearly, and I know exactly what you're looking for in a character design. So, a uh, 45-year-old woman, divorced woman, who's uh, lead the president of a company, obviously is much more suited to your taste. But I also figured you would like him. I'm looking for. There's the original Road Boys. Well, some of them. Um, I started giving I started giving him a different eye shape because one of the things that I was seeing while I was working on like faces, right? was that a lot of the characters had the, um, I did like a sketchbook of these. So Laika's eye looks like this. Mars's eye is pretty similar, but it's a little droopier on the side. And then Yue, or Yue has the, has this, and then like a wrinkle because he's old. And then like, also if it's a close up of Laika's, you get to see like that. And then if it's a close-up of Mars, Mars actually has a more cat-like eyeball. Because their eye looks like that. But I was like drawing Roadboy and I was, yeah, he's got the old man squint. Because, well, he also wears glasses that are too small for him. Um, but not exactly health insurance existing in the... He's not that old. Yeah, I mean, 45 isn't that old, but like you get wrinkles when you're in your 20s, so... Um, I wanted to, but then I wanted to give Roadboy like a different eye shape from the other ones. And so I was trying to not make him look like angry um, by giving him like an eye that kind of goes down into the nose. Um, so the important part is I have to make it so that his pupil, if it makes contact with the top of his eye, still gets like the shiny part here because then it looks okay. And then I started giving him like a little eyeliner because like, if we're being honest, if any of the characters consistently put on makeup, Roadboy probably would put on, like, eyeliner. Um, and, I mean, he likes furry My Chemical Romance, so, like, it's not... It's not the far of a stretch to say he would do it. Mars and Laika are au my autism wall. Um, I think these are all of the guys that I have so far. Oh, and then Algernon. Algernon has, um... I want to pull up a picture of Algernon where I think I drew her really well, but uh, it's got like something very spoily on it, so I can't. Algernon and you have pretty similar eyes, but not exactly the same. I also think that Yue has lighter eyes than her, so that's that's where they look different. But yeah, I wanted to do different eyes for Roboy. Gotta print out a picture of Leica and tape it to my wall. It's funny, I have been meaning to print a Leica wall. Furry MCR, yes. Uh, Roadboy likes Furry MCR and Leica likes Furry Pierce the Veil. That's lore. That's that's canon and will happen and be mentioned. Not by name, because I don't know if I can get... I can't... Who is Algernon? She's a character that hasn't been introduced yet, um, but she's the blonde mousy. She's... Hold on. Not the glasses going sideways. This... This one. It's really sketchy, but... Blonde girl, I love you! Um, but yeah, she's the mousy. She's also a fisher. She fishes. Furry, pierce the veil. Pierce the whale. Real Q is, can I fund a Roadboy keychain? Oh, they're happening. I was doodling. So the keychain design releases, I'm going to do one for each of the main five, um, which is Algernon, Leica, UA, Mars, and uh, Roadboy. But I wanted to release them with the chapters when the characters were introduced because, you know, like for people that don't 
keep up with the lore. I don't want them to be like, who is this character and why should I care about a charm about them? Usually I want to give it some time into the comic for them to get to know the characters before they before dropping the acrylic charms. But uh, Roadboy will get a charm once chapter 3 starts, which, by the way, guys, chapter 3 is only 25 pages away from where the Ko-Fi members are, which is, like, kind of terrifying to think about. Um, I was excited that when we breached chapter 2, I was like, alright, now the story's really getting in swing. But chapter 3 is like, I didn't expect to be here as quickly as we were. Like, I thought this was going to take a little more than a year, but it didn't. Um... So I'm excited. I'm just excited for the, the Roboy debut. That's also part of the reason why I've been drawing him more. I think he's silly. I, he is definitely like every single person that knows the, the story of Laika's. Uh, when I've described it to, described it to him, he's been a fan favorite pretty much every single time. And I think that's funny because when I made Roboy, my concept for him was like, if Laika's Comet is a sign-in in terms of genre, what would happen if you put a shonen protagonist into a genre they're not supposed to be in and then you also made them not the main character? How would they come off to anyone else? And that's basically Roadboy's starting concept. And then I took it a lot further than that, obviously. Like when you when you start with stuff like that, you have to evolve on it further. Celibacy sweep? What? <laughs> what what I have to go back. That's crazy to think about because it feels like I was reading your chapter two sketch pages last week. No, seriously, I'm, I'm sobbing. He sounds silly. I love you, Road Boy. I pronounce. Is it Sinan or Sinan? I thought it was Sinan because I thought the uh the E I. Why are we saying celibacy sweep? Systems of a doe are they all deer? That would be kind of funny actually, because then you can make the doe a deer. No, anyone sound of music? No, I'm old. Um. Oh, I forgot to do his hair spikier than that. There we go. Oh, and the other thing is that um, I kind of just put a bunch of characters that I like in a blender when I was thinking of the design for Roadboy, or at least how he like moves around and acts. And then again, he became his own thing over time. But I think it's funny how like character writing and designing is really like cooking. You take the ingredients of something that you like and you just like put it all in a pot and then you get a delicious stew of like something interesting and new. Celibacy BTS gif what? Have you ever seen the celibacy sweep gif? That's like one of my favorite. Oh no, the Pokemon playlist over. Sniff. Sniff sniff. It's okay, I have the I have the long one. Oh, but I can play this now. Okay, guys, guys, this, uh, keep in mind, I don't know if anyone else likes City Pop, but City Pop is a genre of music. When I was listening to this song, I did the... Where is it? 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 It's on here somewhere. I did this drawing. I was like, if if I ever had the time to... Because I love City Pop and I love Disco, and I think they're definitely like sister genres, because like City Pop was pretty heavily inspired by Disco, to my understanding. I would love to make an anime opening, like a fake anime opening to for like his comic to the song Comet because it's a uh, stop the sad night or like stop night sadness or something like that. Hold on. I can send it in chat because like the English name is difficult to find it by. Um, it's funny because I heard I found it in Spanish first. Like his comic. Yeah, she's got one. Don't worry. I'm sending I'm sending the link. Oh my god, I turned off the music for a second. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. I send it. I just want to make sure I didn't- Okay, good, I didn't turn on my noise. My noise. I want to make sure I wasn't turning on my stream so you guys weren't getting like the echoed reverb of my stream playing over top of the actual stream, because I have done that before and it was nightmarish. Oh wait. Oh yeah, this is the bag. Sorry, I'm condensing layers where I can. I kind of like the little doodles, I'm keeping them. And now that he's shrunk down, I can bring him back down to size with me. Yeah, that's actually way more proportional, although his leg is kind of sticking out there. Ain't it? Ain't it? And also, I saw Lemmy's question. <laughs> Baby, can I share the motorcycle guy that was- Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not as of now, like, that is Roadboy's uh, voice claim. Yes, Forrest, you can share it. 
because I think that it's a really good reference for what Road Boy sounds like when I'm writing him. Oh, but Lemmy, I saw your question about Brazilian city pop, um, and I would love to if you have any to share. I can't play it during the stream because I'm scared to like copyright strike, so I play like non-copyrighted things for the VODs. Um, but I can listen afterwards. We have a whole car ride that's going to be like an hour and a half tomorrow. Okay, I don't want to spoil anything. I don't think that that's spoilers, don't worry. I can send it to you over Tumblr since I've had to collect them. Yes, please. But yeah, I don't think that- I don't think the voice claim for him is spoilers, it's okay. Everyone- I've said that you- that- uh, not you- I- I've said that Road Boy's bi, so it's okay. Um... Yeah, it looks better. That already looks better. I think they're cutes. They're silver. They're silver. The only thing is now the line art in this head is a little smaller than I want it to be, but I can always just go back over it too. That happens sometimes. Pierce the Veil, I love emo music. Me too. Did everyone see the video? Did everyone enjoy the video? <laughs> yeah. Sorry for being off topic now. You can read this if you get a chance. Oh, it's the observations post. Don't worry about being off topic. I absolutely want to see that later. I'm pulling that up so I can read it after stream. Um... One thing that I have always liked to do with like these sketchier things is do like these little shadow lines where the overlap of like different body parts happens because I feel like it gives it such like an interesting look. But it does require going back and cleaning up the sketch a little bit here and there. So bear with me. And then I'm going to color it. I wish that Photoshop that had that like select thingy where you could just like go around it and then like it could just dump all in the similar area. Life could be a dream. Oh my god, I totally forgot to do his arm. Elbowless forest. Like a boneless rib. A hundred gex in like his comet is a hundred geckos. I feel like a poser. I have no idea what's going on or who's in who's who in like his comet outside of reading it. No, that's see, that's the thing. I try to avoid talking too much about characters that aren't in the comic yet because I don't want anyone that like doesn't keep up with the drawings. And like there was a lot of pre-production stuff that I posted and talked about. So I don't want to alienate anyone that wasn't there for it, Um, which is why I have now like started talking about Road Boy a little bit because he's going to be up next in chapter three. Um, but when it comes to Algernon, I try not to talk too much about her yet because I want people's impression of her to be based off of, like, how she is in the comic rather than, like, anything. Oh, I forgot the music ended. Me when I forget music, uh, is something I should be playing as a streamer. I want people's judgments and, like, perceptions of her as a character to be, like, based on who she is in the comic rather than, like, anything that they might hear from my mouth or, like, during streams and stuff like that, if that makes sense. Twitch ad solutions. About what chapters do you think characters get to introduce? Oh, I know already. I can lay that out. I can give like a rough outline. I'm not going to say what happens, but like just so you're not um, like waiting too, too long. Obviously, chapter one was Mars and like a introduction. Um, chapter two was Yue. And then um, technically another character is introduced in chapter two. But like, again, like saying it won't be good for like people's reading longevity but like in a bit you'll figure it out i'm sure or like some people are going to start figuring it out so then chapter three is road boy and i'm really excited for this chapter i think that the first two chapters are a little bit heavy and it's not that nothing like big is revealed or happens in road boy's chapter it's more just like his personality is the much needed tension relief in this first little book's arc um because he's very silly but i think that what mars gets out of meeting road boy is huge because um otherwise i feel like their character would kind of get i don't want to say like coddled but like they just wouldn't learn how to be a kid and play and i think that that's really what road boy uh does for the narrative 
Then chapter four, Algernon is introduced. Um, and again, I don't want to say anything about Algernon because I want people to be able to like meet her on their own. Um, but I think that Algernon's chapter of the chapters that are in early comic is probably one... So if you guys remember what happened with Steven Universe when Stronger, Stronger Than You dropped and Garnet's whole like thing was revealed, this is really where I see Laika's Comet starting to pick up with people that were not readers right off the bat. Um, yes, and I was going to say, I don't want to compare to that. Like, I don't want to like hype it up so much that like it, it disappoints. However, I know my own writing and I think that by and large, Algernon's chapter is like the strongest writ written. I think this is the most fun. I think this is fun for the lore that's introduced. And I think that y Yue's character is like nice. And I think this was my like little skip and a hop of a beginning where like it was difficult getting into it, but like I had to start somewhere. So it I did what I could. Um, chapter five is Bishop and Larkspur. And that is where hopefully based off of this chapter bringing in new readers this is where things are going to start to kick up into like more serious plot that i think people maybe aren't expecting i don't know um some people have already started asking questions that are going to be like led up to and revealed in bishop's chapter so i there are some people that are picking up where i'm going with the story um <laughs> i like their little nose um but we'll see. And then I can't go too much farther than that. Shoal is introduced in chapter six, and I think that Shoal is the last chapter that we have any like new character introductions. Um, so after chapter six, no one super new is going to be introduced. It's mostly going to be exploring the dynamics between the existing characters in until the end of the comic. Bishop is a bat, yes. Looking forward to Algernon and Bishop. There, it's funny because they take a little while longer to get introduced and shoal. There's a lot of people that really want to know them just based off of design, and I'm like, guys, I promise it'll happen. Just be patient because I can't rush into it. Because if I do, then they won't be given the they won't be given the time to cook that they deserve. Like everyone, everyone needs their time for for preparation before we start getting into the development. What size canvas is this? I'm pretty sure I have my canvas size listed below, but if it's not, I do have it in my card. And I draw pretty much in the same size canvas every time. I just, like, tweak it gradually as I draw. Although, I've taken to making drawings uh, to shrinking them down rather than changing my canvas size, because apparently my canvas size is, like, kind of huge, which I didn't know until Ra pointed it out. Um, but now I, like, try to minimize things rather than make them bigger. I started drawing in that size because it was what I was recommended to to be ready for uh, printing comics and stuff, and then I just started doing all of my art in that size. Yes, that's it. 680 by 440. Algernon reminds me of Ginkgo from Mushishi. I don't think I've seen uh, Mushishi. Is Shoal based off that old comic of yours from college? Um, Shoal was inspired... So... If anyone has been following me for that long, I'm impressed. I know C was because C has drawn some of the characters from it. But when I was in college, I wanted to make a furry uh, mystery dungeon game. And the characters from it were all like different plant characters. Not Angelic Hearts, but Angelic Hearts was from high school. Like when I say I've been trying to write a comic for like basically my whole life I have I just finally got one I finally got a an egg that I threw at the wall and it stuck rather than sliding down um <laughs> but uh no it was quest for Arcadia the main characters were Sprout who was a doggy and you can probably see like I have uh main character design traits that carry over from my different like a uh, story attempts um and then, so Sprout was one of the main characters, or, well, really was the main character, but then a few of the- wow, this is a really hideous drawing of Sprout. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I definitely have a better drawing of them, and I can also bring up a drawing of Nautilus at the same time. Um, and it'll be a little less- a little less uggy. I know I have it in here somewhere. Unless I'm a liar. No, I've got to have a drawing of Nautilus in here somewhere. Because I did a really nice one of them in, like, 2019? There it is. So, this character, Nautilus. Um, 
Shoal and Nautilus are both otters, and I didn't realize it until I started drawing Shoal. Shoal's actually... Oh, first time joining stream. Welcome in, Coco Joe 5. I am just talking about what character designs and working on some Pokemon trainer sonas. Um, but Shoal was based off of an old work friend that I had, and then I asked her if I had to make her a furry, what animal would she be? And she was like, well, I'd want to be a sea otter. I didn't realize that I had another otter adjacent character that looked very similar until I drew Shoal, and I was like, hmm, she looks familiar. <laughs> um, but honestly, I love otters, so I don't even really mind. I think they're great. I think they're very cute. All right, now I can bring them up. The other thing I wanted to do with this is... Actually, I'll color this later. I don't need to color this now. I still really like this sketch, though. I was I gotta do something with this because this looks good. And there's the, like, uh... The little kitties I did for the TikTok thumbnails, I think, are also nice. You gotta slow cook your characters, like, ancient stew development-wise. Oh, this is true. This is very true. Which is funny because I think that, like, while they're in the comic, the introduction and, like, the things that... Like... I love character introduction and, like, reveals through action. I like when stuff happens. Um, but I think that it's so much better to, like... Like, people... I think that sometimes in uh, shows and comics and stuff, people will reveal information about themselves way more quickly than is actually natural. And it's much more interesting for me for that information to be revealed either, like, by accident or by a different character about them. So, like... Something that happens a lot, or at least, like, when I meet other people, is that, like, um, I'll talk to them, I'll meet them, I'll notice something that they do, and I'm like, huh, that's a strange quirk. And then someone else will fill me in why they do that, or, like, what history is there that causes them to do that. But also, I find that people kind of reveal things about themselves by their actions without meaning to. And so I find that that's much more interesting for character writing, right? Like... It's better when it's not like, oh, you know, my parents died in a fire and the effects of watching Steven Universe in high school, slow burn world building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like, and you're right, Steven Universe does do that really well. Oh, I'm going out. I totally re recommend it. It's very abstract and peaceful and it's about a guy dealing with these yokai spirits kind of things. Not exercising them, but helping people live alongside them. That sounds cool. I actually have heard of it before. Meets a new gay person. Hi, I will tell you my issues. I th Well, and it's different from person to person. Also glowy mushrooms. I did see the posture check, I promise. What? What? Stop with the troll movie? Oh, the my grandma died because of singing. Yeah, I, to be fair, I think that, was li that line was funny as hell, so it was loud. It's permitted. Um... But it's different. It's different from person to person, and I think that, like, knowing that when you're writing your characters and, like, what someone's... So, I've mentioned that Road Boy is, like, a shonen protagonist in a, the wrong genre. Road Boy reveals information about himself like he's the main character of, like, a video game or an anime, but that's because Road Boy formed his personality around fiction. Like, that's kind of the whole thing with him is that, like, he didn't really have any other role, mo role models growing up other than his like adoptive dads so his idea of what kind of person he's supposed to be is pretty heavily based off of like fictional characters he wants to be like because he has no standing otherwise um so like when the person that road boy is in his head and the person that road boy is ideally do not always line up with who he is actually and i think while he has nothing but good intentions, um, sometimes it, like, comes off that he doesn't actually have a really, like, down-to-earth understanding of himself, but what he does have is a very clear and, like, uh, loving understanding of who Laika is as a person, and sometimes doesn't understand how to communicate because of that. Hydrate drowning. Drowning me. I want to do a comic where it deals with the character, where a main character deals with grief, but I'm worried that I will start, when I start, I it's just going to be another angsty comic where, when I really want a happy comic that has a dark beginning. Well, so, it depends what your grief is, obviously, and it depends, like, how you want to, like, depict your character dealing with it. 
because I don't think that grief necessarily has to be angsty. I think it just has to... Okay, so there's this theory around grief, and I've quoted it a lot of times in the last few months because I think that it's very true. I don't think that grief ever gets smaller, and I don't think that things ever hurt less. When you lose someone that you love, and you know that they can't come back, and that there was you just didn't have enough time with them, or there were things that you want to say, you never stop feeling that way, but your life... If this is your grief, if your grief is like a little pit, and you are inside of it, eventually, this little thing that you are in the center starts to grow bigger and surrounds the grief. Like, the person that you are and your life's experience surround it. It becomes bigger than the grief. It doesn't mean that the grief changes in size or that things hurt any less, but you fill your life with other things. The button in a box thing? I don't know if I've heard it that way. Oh my god, I'm being drowned. Roadboy has such a wonderful design. Thank you! The other thing I did with his design is that I wanted to make a character that looked like he could roll like Sonic. Your grief never goes away. It becomes less significant part because everything else grows. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So if you were trying to write a story about grief and you were worried about it become being like edgy, what I would suggest is write about the daily life of someone that is going through the stages of grief. Because the thing is, unfortunately, Life does not wait for you to grieve, and I think that that has positives and negatives. I think that unfortunately our like culture and society, or at least in the US, is very um, impatient with the grieving process. Like they expect you to have your funeral and cry for like a few weeks, maybe a month if that's socially appropriate. But then you're expected to get back to work and just be like the person that you were before and like continue to be a functioning and serving member of society when that's just not like a, an entire human being is not something that you can kind of just like forget was there so i think that in that way it's negative right it's very inhumane to expect people to not act like human beings because the system is not designed to have the room for us to act like human beings on the other hand though I think the fact that life goes on around you, even despite grief and the things that you face, is also part of what helps you heal. Not the work side of things, but the fact that something so terrible and awful can happen in the next day, there are going to be kids playing outside, and there's going to be people walking their dog, and the sun is going to rise. And eventually, gradually, while those things continue to happen, that's how your grief starts to feel smaller inside you. Oh yeah, there is very much just like a get over it mentality. I've seen it shown in a diagram of grief and the jar growing big around it. That's a good way. Yeah, exactly. Much as you might want it to, the world has not ended. No, and that's like something that... It was so weird. When I was hospitalized the night after I made an attempt on my life and my friend brought me to the hospital, I thought it was so strange because... I was sitting here in like a police station and surrounded by like paramedics and stuff and you know outside there was like an ice cream truck and people were going to the movies and people were going to classes and stuff and I was sitting there and I was like I felt like I just went through something tr like tremendous and I'm about to have my whole life upheaved because I'm going to the hospital and yet it feels like everyone around me like their lives are all exactly the same and I had to like sit there and wonder for a second like if I was gone the next morning and if I wasn't there to see it, the same things would probably be playing out, right? Like, no one's no one's not going to like go about their life because someone they didn't know isn't there anymore. They wouldn't even notice. So that's kind of it snapped me out of it right then and there, because while I don't really think that that's why I was like doing what I did, I like I didn't want people to be like so sad, so terrible that you're gone. It was really shocking that I was like, you know, this would have been such a waste. I could do anything that I want with this life, and I was going to throw it away because I didn't think that I was allowed to. And thank you for the follow. Sorry, I was reading chat. I got- I got behind. I don't know why I'm drawing Roadboy. I started doodling Roadboy and I went completely brainless because I like drawing him, but I actually- I should probably get back to the actual assignments. I just like his face. 
I think going to the hospital for the first time really changed me for the better. It showed me that even in the most fucked up situations, the world may suck, but people who have been hurt so deeply still manage to love so much. That's true. No, that's very true. Give yourself time to grieve, but don't give your grieving the choice of controlling you longer than it needs. Thank you. I'm, I, I am glad I'm still here too. I've done so much in the, t that, the time since then that like, that feels almost an entire lifetime away. Sometimes I've said that it feels like the person that I was when I went into the hospital isn't the same person I came out of as. Um, almost to the degree where like, there was a while I couldn't really remember anything from before. It, I don't know if it was like temporary am amnesia, but the doctor I was speaking to at the time said it was kind of like that, where it felt like all of my memories from before that time were kind of like, it was like watching them through a TV screen rather than remembering as the, them as my own memories. But that's been gradually changing over time. I think that like, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. Like, I'm glad I'm here not just because of the things that I've done, but I'm glad I'm here to give myself a second chance to actually do what I wanted to, rather than, you know, not being for people that didn't even care about that to begin with. He when I am not the same bitch I was six months ago, who is she? Because he is not me, real. Well, so I think that there's something there. The, the So my therapist that I was talking to at the time was explaining that, like, sometimes when you experience something that's so painful, your brain kind of... I think of it like snow, where, like, you know, when it's wintertime and it snows, the earth is still underneath that blanket of snow, but everything looks and feels softer because it's covered up. And eventually it's going to have to melt and things can't stay frozen over. But like, for the time being, everything feels quiet for a little bit. And I think that the brain kind of acts in the same way. That like, when things are so troubling or too harsh for you to be able to process right then and there, it kind of snows over the memory or what's happened to you. And then later, it'll melt away when you're capable of processing it. But in the time being, it's going to feel kind of like fuzzy or not so real. The Brain Vault. I always like hearing your thoughts about stuff. You're so big brain. Thank you! I've had to, uh, both in my own personal life and, like, in helping others, I've had to think about how the brain works and, like, how trauma affects people differently. I think that, like, because of it, it's given me this, like, perspective that I can't really see anyone as, like, uniquely evil or fucked up because life will do certain things to certain people because of like a pattern of experiences or like things that they have been led to believe are true um i don't think it means that anyone can be good because i think at the end of the day it comes down to their choices so they could choose to be good people but like it doesn't mean that they will or that that's feasible um but it has really given me like a different perspective on like what sickness, good, evil, and the other, like so many other things are. I hope this isn't weird to say, but I've been stuck in my own head and getting major anxiety over it the last few days and your streams have really helped me pull me out of it. I'm glad. I've heard not like super serious uh, in tandem with the, the subject that we, we were just discussing, but my boyfriend started watching my streams before we dated, and he used to fall asleep to them. Um, and I've had a few people, like, send me asks admitting that, that they're like, I'm sorry, I come to your streams and I do stay the whole time, but it, I usually fall asleep. Uh, and that's kind of like, I mean, it's a compliment to me. I'm glad that my voice is, like, calming enough that people can fall asleep to it. I try not to shout or, like, speak too harshly so that the people that are out there sleeping... Awaga. The people that are out there sleeping can stay so. The vibes here are comfy. I would I would put on a fire crackling noises if it didn't wouldn't distract me or put me to sleep because I like sleep listening to ASMR. So I know that I would just be knocked unconscious if I started playing like ambient noises and stuff in the background. I think this is the s not Snowpoint City. The X and Y Snow City, but I can't remember 
what the name of that one is. If anyone else is looking for more like Snapcube on YouTube, for more like that, Snapcube on YouTube makes streams specifically for sleep. That's cool. I didn't know that. Snowbelly, yeah, I think that's what it is. Have you considered that you might have a small influence on what people talk about if- Oh yeah, um, I show up in people's dreams a lot. I don't know what it is, but like, ever since I started getting a following, and even before that, but like, I want to say the first time that ever happened was when I was like 10. Um, I kept showing up in my one best friend's dreams, and then, um, since then, people that I don't even really know all that well have been like, Hey, I don't know why, but I had a dream about you last night, and I was like, Oh, interesting. I've now thought of it as just like, I'm hopping around and seeing how it is in other people's. I just texted you. I know, Dia, you just texted- oh, Dia just had a dream that their mom ran me over with her car. Um, so, but to be fair, that one is kind of based in a real experience that we almost had. Because Dia and I were stargazing at one point when I went to visit, and we were laying in the driveway, and then Dia's mom, like, almost ran us over with her car. Um... So, you know, that was that was really based in a truth that could have happened. But I do think it's funny. Yeah, people dreaming about me is... And then I get, like, Tumblr asks, like, all the time about people being like, I had a dream about you. And I'm like, okay, what did I do this time? I think it's funny, honestly. I, th I think seeing how people uh, subconsciously characterize me and, like, what I do... No one's ever had a bad dream about me. I think it's always just... The worst it's been is, like, weird. I think it's because you're a very unique person that really make people think about things. That's nice. <laughs> okay, what I do this time? Well, listen, I I'm always curious. I want to know. I want to know what people think that I'm up to or what my antics are. Ooh, that was my knuckle. Sorry if anyone heard that. The dream, last will dream before that is like a comic tabletop RPG that has been hotel fans were really mad about. That I honestly just feel like is a future prediction. I don't know if I'd want. Uh, like us to be a uh, tabletop i could see a game being made out of it at some point but i don't know what kind i just know it probably wouldn't be a tabletop i think that that the characters are too uh i don't want to say rigid but like the characters and their development is a bit too straightforward for it to make for a fun experience that other people would have a lot of influence over i think a house plant wait what house plant you were in one of my dreams once, but it was really weird because you were a houseplant, and somehow I just knew that was for you for some reason. I'm gonna draw me as a houseplant now. Hold on. Oh wait, there's the border layers here, that's why it didn't work. Okay, you know those little succulents that are like... Like this? Me as a houseplant. That's me. I'm sitting and I'm hanging out and we're hanging out together. I had one of these things and it died like horribly. I'm a terrible succulent owner and I don't mean to be because I really like them. I just, they keep dying in horrific ways. Plant sonas are going to be the new DeviantArt craze. It'd be cute. I think the dream game concept was you make a first sona and then help like uh, missions to fix drains and sinks and stuff. That's actually really cute. That is really cute. What stabilizer level am I on? 12%. I don't think it's a stabilizer, though. I think it's smoothing. But if that's the same thing, then I hope that answers your question. Oh, thank god. I'm using the right brush shape. I thought I wasn't using the right brush size for a second, and I was like, do I have to redo all of those lines that I just did? I don't. I once had a dream where it was my birthday and we went to the mall and found a little keychain mystery box with like his comic characters in it. I got really excited when I woke up. I was really sad it wasn't real. I'm sorry. I would love that. I would see again. I'm a huge like I don't want to produce merch that will just end up floating in the ocean somewhere unloved and polluting the world. Um, kind of flies in the face of both my own beliefs and what Lycus Comet is all about. Um, God, this Pikachu cheek. The sketch is so cute, but I can't get the cheek in the line art and it's killing me. I'm not going to do it until I'm like loose enough to get it because my wrist is a little stiff right now. I was bad. I've been drawing like all day. I knew I was streaming tonight and I was like, well, I want to be warmed up and I'm warmed up now, but now I'm so, I've been drawing for so long that I'm like tired, wore myself out. I was like, oh, I got a race tonight. What if I ran a marathon in the morning? Crazy ass. Anyway, um, 
I would love to be able to see Leica's Comet keychain boxes in the mall. I think it would be really fun, and I would probably go. I am a bit of a sucker for like figure blind boxes. Uh, I know I could probably just get them for free since they're my characters. Opinion on white chocolate? Boo. Bad. I hate white chocolate. I think it's gross. Dark chocolate all the way. I eat like 70% cocoa. I like dark chocolate. I like- I, the, I literally have a box of Meiji's chocolate on my desk in front of me and it's the it's called black chocolate because i i need the darkest version of what they have also i can't really eat chocolate from the us anymore um i literally have to unsubscribe i'm sorry i was gonna say the good news is guys is that i don't like white chocolate so if i ever get it i'll give it away it's more for you think of it that way it's an ecosystem we have to help each other in this cold, cold world. If we were all the same, then we we would be fighting over everything. Instead, we can share and be happy. <laughs> I don't think white chocolate is evil. I just think it's too sweet. Like, I have always liked bittersweet stuff. I don't think I've ever been... Like, I don't really like uh, candy. Candy. I like chocolate, but I don't like, um, like gummies. Gummies make me really sick. I don't like licorice. I don't like nerd. Well, nerds are all right, but they're because that's because they're sourish. Um, I don't like Smarties. I don't like uh, Gobstoppers. I don't like lollipops. I like none of the, none of that. None of that. Swedish Fish I used to like because I would eat them with like salt pretzels or soft pretzels at like swim meets and stuff. But now I had a box of Swedish Fish as an adult, and I'm like. I, it just kind of made me sick. Like, it made me a bit ill. What do you even, like, get for Halloween? Um, I honestly usually don't eat any Halloween chocolate anymore. I used to eat, like, Hershey chocolate. But then I started eating chocolate from, like, Europe or Japan. And I can't eat, like, American chocolate anymore. It tastes like uh, barf. It's got... It's, apparently it's because of, like, some preservatives that it's gotten it. Um... That the U.S. uses for their chocolate, and now it's just like it made it ruined American chocolate for me because I can't eat stuff without being like, ugh, there's something wrong with this. Like it tastes soiled, um, and I don't even want to be a snob because like people try to like, give me candy and stuff. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's yeah, European chocolate's really good though. Willow, have you ever had Irish chocolate or potato chips? I don't think I've ever had. Oh, oh, well, okay. So there's a candy I like. And this is going to make me sound like a grandfather, I'm sorry. I, uh, I really like Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes are like a chunk of coconut and sugar, and then they're coated with like cinnamon powder on the outside, and that's, that's it. It's just coconut and cinnamon, and I really like it. I think it's good. Um, and to, so to answer your question, no, I've never had an Irish chips or chocolate, but I would be <laughs> Ireland. I would like to, though. Oh, thank you for the sub, Jackadamia. Yes, I did read that. Hype train incoming. <laughs> I know some of them are made with real potatoes. Yes, yeah, some are made with real potatoes. The ones that I get are always coconut. Off topic, I imagine Lycus Comet and Endroids. I would love... Ugh, I would love figures. I know that it's not like... I know... Oh my gosh, thank you for the subscription, the hopes. Holy crap. I need to make like a sub goal because we've gotten so many this sub gift or use bits to get the next level what's that sorry i have a notification on the top of my screen i don't know what it means i mean when i'm a streamer and don't understand sure thing i love your art i feel like i f might know yours i think i might follow you i'm so bad with memorizing usernames i'm so much like when i remember people online i remember their icon or like i remember their fursona and that's what helps me Pinwheels or something different. Sorry, now I'm reading chat for like snacks. It just reminded me when my mom bought those baking chocolates and I thought it was normal dark chocolate. Oh yeah, that would hurt. That would hurt. <laughs> Thank you, Osu. How do you pick your colors? I have a few videos on it. So the colors here, actually, this is going to be part of the. I have to go over to the tab that it's in. Um. I'm doing like a little walkthrough video on how I do like my bigger like as comment pages. And one of the things that I wanted to mention on it is that when I'm picking colors, I don't start with a white background. I start with like a colored, like a very 
light colored background, usually like a cream, a light green, a uh, light blue, because when you take away all of those and you put the colors in, it makes a much more vibrant looking piece. Um, because you're like, instead of building up from white, which can cause you to have like a really desaturated and like light color palette, you're building up from a color. This also works if you start with like a really dark colored background or if you start with like black, because then your colors will feel like a lot more rich and darker. But I tend to like to start from like an off white color because then it's still light colored and it's still like kind of pastel y, but it's got much more like vibrance to it. It's actually such a fascinating tip. It's it's like how your brain works, right? Because when you when you have this, this background color, after staring at it for a while, it starts to look white to your eye. Um, but when you take that away and you put actual white next to it, it becomes clear that that wasn't, but by that point, you've been building off of that lighter color as if it were white. Colors are relative. They're relative, and like your eye is very easy to fool. Like, you can really easily trick your eye into thinking that something is something that it's not. Like, this this color here, which is the blue of the trans flag in Charizard's wing, is not blue. It's purple. It's like, it's not even... Oh, I guess you can't see that. Uh, Actually, what I bet I can show you is a screenshot of it. So, like... Da -da -da. This... This is the color that that is. Charizard's wing in the trans flag is this color. It's just a very gray purple because when you have a yellow and pink background and you take something that's gray and purpley, it's going to come off as blue because gray purple is a cooler tone than pink and yellow are. And because yellow and purple are uh, complementary colors to each other. Making art is about being, co being a very competent illusionist. This is true. The colors in this piece feel so nostalgic and almost dreamy. Thank you! It's because it's based off of a manga from 1999 or like 1996. Um, I wanted it to have kind of like, you know, childhood Pokemon game feel, but like the character from it has very clearly grown up. Um, it's called How I Became a Pokemon Card. I don't know what the hype train means, but I think it's so cute seeing the little, little confetti. I don't know if anyone else can see it from their point of view. Oh, and thank you for the sub, Jaredillion, Jaredillion, Jaredillion twenty seven ten. Thank you very much for the sub. I'm sorry, I'm squinting. You guys can see it too. Okay, good, good. What does it mean? <laughs> like, I don't know where it came from or how it started. It's cool. I am appreciating it for its help. How I became a Pokemon card. No one. Yeah, I really like. Well, okay. I read How I Became a Pokemon card because it had a chapter on Bill, and Bill is my favorite character, and also the character I relate the most to in the Pokemon franchise. Um, so I kept reading it after that because I thought it was really cute. And then I got to this chapter with a carry who, to my understanding, he's like the only canon trans man character in all of Pokemon. Because there are characters like you could headcanon as being trans mask or trans men. But like, Carrie is just not even headcanon. He is just, he just blatantly is a trans man. And so, uh, I think that it's always surprising to me that like people don't know about it, but it is also kind of an obscure manga. And I can't even like figure out where someone would find the physical print. Because I don't think it ever got officially translated. There's just like a lot of fan translations online. Um, but I don't know. I think it's cool. It's when a lot of people sub or donate. I'm pretty sure it shows the stream to more viewers on the front page too. That's awesome. That's actually very cool. Well, thank you to everyone who subs so far that's been helping out. I've been really enjoying streaming. I, I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do it without everyone that's here. Uh, and it's been so nice because of that, so I appreciate both the warm welcome I've had back to it and then the continued support too. It's made it, uh, like, it went from being like, I'm a little shy, but like, I, I want to do it again, but, you know, if it's, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, to like, I'm really glad I started and I, I don't even know, like, the weeks where I'm like, oh, I can't stream, or like, I don't know if I'll be able to stream, I like, find ways to get to do it because I enjoy it so much. And I really did miss it when I was gone. Your streams are very nice to chill to. Thank you. Your style reminds me of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, po Pokemon has always been a huge style inspiration for me. Pokemon, Scott Pilgrim, Soul Eater, um, 
there was something else that I had thought of earlier where I was like, oh, of course, that's where I learned to do XYZ thing. I guess like Studio Trigger Animations, Ghibli, or like Miyazaki films, Satoshi Kon. There we go. I was leaving this little hair bit to the end because it was like really struggling with it earlier today when I was trying it. I love Soul Eater and Scott Pilgrim. I need to go zzz, good night. Thank you. Good night, Evrignan. These streams make my heart feel so warm. I'm glad you're enjoying enjoying doing them. I am. I like I think it's uh provided like a lot of structure to my day. I I've talked about it like a little bit, but like, you know, because of moving and stuff, we don't have any like IRL friends here other than Lusa. Coughcats just gifted five subs. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Wait, so it's like a little level up thing. We gifted in chat today. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was going to say Lusa's nearby, which is why we're visiting soon, because I realized that I have been not going out and seeing people, even though I could. Hee <laughs> hee, sub gift. This is awesome. I might make a little sub goal for next stream. Oh my god, wait, that just reminded me. Oh, I have seen Tokyo Godfathers. I love it. And Hana is like my favorite character ever. She's so... I love her. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. She's everything. She is the moment. Okay, wait, wait. Before I forget though, guys, guys, what emotes do you guys want? Because I was thinking about this today when I was working on my little offline animation and I like realized I have no like things like as common emotes. Cats. Like a like a like a. Oh, thank you for the hundred bit cheer, cheer, Wick. Like as emotes, like as emotes, like as emotes, the clover. I was just wondering a couple things. Is there a voice claim for Mars and how do you pronounce Minya? Oh, okay. Minya is pronounced like the Russian word Minya, and I think that I pronounce it right, but I don't speak Russian. It was uh my friend and I were the ones that talked about Minya's name and why I named them that. Minya that. Compromise, we want cats, we want like a Mars is right there. Fail guy UA. Oh my god. <laughs> You're gonna make me put that man in situations. I can definitely do Leica emotes, and I was gonna do a harbor emote because every time he meows, everyone starts meowing in chat, so it's like anytime he makes a cameo. Do you know the pose of the dog with the piece? But that is Mars and I don't know. UA emotes, please make him pathetic. <laughs> Good lord. I can I can definitely do some of the like emotes. I could do like one for each character, because I think that there are that many emotes that you get uh being I think. Actually that reminds me of Willow. I made my personal Oh, I didn't answer the voice claim question. Thank you for mentioning that. Um Mars's voice claim? <sighs> the poodle with the shaved pot. Do you mean this one? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Also, Mars's voice claim is Baby Marceline from Adventure Time. That was the... the... This one. This one. The little gay one? This one? <laughs> the little gay one? Yeah. If I saw Russian Cyrillic of Minyan, I would see I would see pronunciations, but sounds right. Okay. The little gay sorry, that's what it is to me. This is a little gay dog. I like that one and I like the dog that looks like this. Like I don't like them because they kind of scare me, but I think they're cute at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, it's kind of frightening, but it is a little bit cute too. Mia has the stress on the second syllable, but my Russian is rusty. Oh, thank you for the hydration, remember? I love crying cat photos. Like, just make those emotes, please. As they're drawn now, they're scary. I'll leave them. I'll, I'll leave them and think about it. I'm not deleting them. Look, see, the layer is still there. I'm just hiding the layer. All the ghost Pokemon? You need to make one for Forest that's Harbor eating a wire. I can even... Hold on, I can even like... No, 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 we gotta go to my sketch pad. We gotta go to my sketch pad so that I can do this. I was thinking of like that, 
but like when he's evil because he's like he's getting his eyes pressed back hold on i'm going dead silent drawing this just because this is what harbor is very cute but when he wants something he he becomes the devil wires I could even put like forest. No, I, f I feel like if forest hands was there, it would be too noisy. Delicious wires. Oh my god! Wait, someone else? We made. How do we make it? Pipe chain made. I'm scrolling up now. Nine subs and one hundred ten bits. Thank you guys. Choo-choo! Anyway, I'm asking because I want things to do for stream for emotes and... Yeah, now this looks like Harbor. I forgot his his cheeks. That's what I was missing. Little wire biter. I love my beautiful, horrible son. And then I have to, like... If I like color it like this, it becomes clear it's like round. And it'll also work well for like shrinking it for the emote. <laughs> you know how it is with spaghetti. Also, welcome in, puppy. Need to make an emote of my dog barking. Like a yippee? Like the the make your sub badges something Pokemon or like a I was thinking of making sub badges either like because on Ko-Fi, they're the clovers, right? So I could do, like, the little clover in, like, a pot. Um, and I don't think I have different sub-tiers yet, but we can see. Um, I think if you did, like, a Discord emote pack and put it on Ko-Fi, people would buy them on the target audience. <laughs> I would do that if people wanted them. Um, hold on, like a TBH creature... Actually, though, if anyone would be the TBH creature, it would be Mars. Like, I don't think that... I think that Laika, if she was anything, would be how, the how bikers eat their skeddy image. Hold on, I gotta draw Mars. I do kind of want to make them do this in the comic at some point. Like, this is not what their eyes look like normally, so it would be very um, noticeable. I'll find a time to do it. I'm good with that. <laughs> oh, she is round and white. Laika is round and white. Me describing myself. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Mars TBH creature. Willow, do you, do you like fan art of Kaleika characters interacting with the Ode Artists OCs? I actually think they're really cute. I wouldn't mind that at all. I saw someone draw, like, uh, the characters interacting with their self-insert. You a nerd emoji? Like, the... the. Well, no, I don't want to draw that, because that's mean. I also worry that that could come off, like, kind of stereotypical. The thing is, like, UA is a nerd, but, like, I also feel like I don't want to lean into it too much. I want to humanize him beyond that. I feel like we can do something funny with him otherwise. It reminds me, I still have to draw my, draw my dog girl OC with, like, a... Erm, actually? <laughs> I could do, like, a... See how it looks. Well, this means I can draw Slate with Mar- Oh my god, please! I would- Okay, Puppy, I'm gonna be honest, I was planning on putting Slate in the comic. I was- I think I've mentioned it before. Who is Yue? Yue is, um... Hold on. No, Mars, get out of here. Get out of here. Run, you scoundrel. This guy. This is Yue. The bunny. Um, yeah. He's like, the- Oh my gosh, thank you for the other for the sub! Holy crap, this has been busy. Is it Isserims or is it Icarums? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. 
Um, but yes, Yui is a character from my comic. I write a webcomic, it's like his comet, and he is the dad of the main character and also like a main character himself. Rough outline versus add some details. Well, so I have the process for it in here. Um, basically what I was going to do is make a TikTok where I go through and like um, describe each step of the comic page process and like what what each of them is for. So like this is the colored sketch, but I also have the black and white sketch underneath that. Or I guess it's like the just like colorless sketch because yeah, there you go. Um, but the little drawing, this one is the thumbnail. So it goes from the thumbnail to this, to this, and then to the final page there. Rough outline said, <laughs> yeah. I look forward to your TikTok posts every day. Thank you. His fluff is gone, bald, in the in the thumbnail or in the colored sketch. Because I think his hair stayed pretty much the same, but in the thumbnail, yeah. I don't do like any details other than the motion of like clothing and stuff in uh, thumbnails. <laughs> bald it in the nail. Reblog to slap his bald head. Guys, leave him alone. And then I drew these little guys for the video so that I could have something in between frames where there's text. I'm like bored flicking between things now. Oh, I don't need that anymore. Sorry for like the um, multiple panel flashings. I'm trying to make sure that I have keeping the harbor, keeping the Mars. I can leave this up. Hell, I could even start coloring this for fun now if I wanted to. Not like that's going to be any nicer on my risk, but um, I want to color. I had a friend who slapped my bald teacher's head once. Oh, hydrate. <laughs> Slap his bald so fast we can cook. Don't do that! Please post the kitties on Tumblr. They're criminally cute. It's your hand nom nom. Kit, do you mean these kids, or do you mean the kitty cats, like the harbor biting wires? And did it make an echoing slap? Also, no one asked me why I'm coloring like this. I'm trying to make sure that the colors look good. And also because these lines are not closed circuits, so I do have to color a little bit by hand, unfortunately. Unless anyone knows something about Photoshop that I have not learned yet, which I will be happy to. Happy, happy day. Da -da 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 -da. C CSP is calling out to you, Lasso Phil. Is y Yue and Rover both trans or just one? Just Yue. Uh, Rover is cis. Oh, that's way too light. That's gonna like I'm not even gonna be able to see that. There we go, that's a little better. Which Pokemon trainer rival ship is your fave, or is it obvious? See, I because I'm 25 and they're children, it's like I don't really ship the Pokemon characters. However, I was at one point a ten-year-old and playing Pokemon, so yes, Silver and the Silver and the main character are my favorite. But like now, I'm just like they're really cute, and I like their character development as friends. But they are also the characters that me and my boyfriend are most like. So it's impossible for me to see them and not think like, okay, someday. So you guys are rivals now, but you, in twenty years, you're going to be like married, right? Like that's what's happening here. It's like red and uh, blue. Like, red and blue are really cute, and there's no way that, to me at least, they are not married as, like, adults. I mean, they traveled to Alola together. Uh, see, actually, actually, while I was doing these, like, redraws and, like, sort of redesigns, I was thinking of drawing silver and gold as adults. Um, because if I had to, if I was in charge of the what I believe to be the inevitable Heart Gold Still Silver remakes that we're going to get within the next few years. Yeah, I love Precious Metal Shipping. I think that they're very cute. Um, oh wait, yeah, Moon Lily. Sorry, I, I'm a fat liar. I forgot that I really liked Moon Lily when I was in high school. <laughs> I was like, 
I finished Sun and Moon and I got depressed for like weeks afterwards because of the ending. And I still love Sun and Moon, but I that ending made me very sad. Um, oh, but winding back around, if I had to be in charge of the uh, inevitable gold, silver, like heart gold, still silver remakes that I'm sure we're going to get for the Switch at some point, I would really love it if like we got a Let's Go Pikachu Eevee situation, not the gameplay, not the gameplay, but the art style that was used and also the concept that like the main kids are no longer the main characters, it's like in the future. Um, because I think that it would be really cool to see like Gold, Silver, uh, and Lyra slash Crystal, whoever they use, um, like as adults with like new kids as the main characters. So obviously with my trainer Sona and my boyfriend's trainer Sona who are based off of like the Jota region, I followed you on Tumblr because I fell in love with your art. Currently because I mean, currently in class, but draw a heart if you read this. Of course. Hold on. I see. I draw five that <laughs> That was the ugliest heart. No. There we go. A lot of hearts. <laughs> I read, I promise. I promise. What do you think the Pikachu Eevee alternatives would be? Um the obvious answers are Meryl and uh Togepi. But I honestly don't think I'd want there to be version starters because I just love Chikorita and Cyndaquil and Totodile so much that like I can't possibly bear the thought of not having them <laughs> as like the little buddies. Are you redrawing some old art? Yeah, I am. I wanted to redraw them in the poses of the characters that they were originally based off of because I wanted to make it more obvious that they were based off of them. Like, obviously, these are still our trainer sonas. Like, they're a, as original as trainer sonas can be while still looking like Pokemon characters. Um, but I was talking about, like, wanting gold-silver remakes. And so I was like, well, if I'm going to talk about gold-silver remakes on my social medias, I'm going to try and make it, like, haha, look, look at these characters that I totally didn't already have on hand waiting and that I absolutely designed for the concept of gold-silver remakes. Haha, <laughs> look as all internet content creators and funny men do. Usually I don't hop on trends, it's like, but like, it's Pokemon, it's Pokemon. Like, I can do whatever I want. I like my fandom. Physically unable to play a Pokemon game without Chikorita. Oh, I love Chikorita. Oshawott's cute. I like Oshawott and I like Duot, and I'm not a huge fan of Samurott. I like Samurott's concept, but I just don't like his there's something about it. Like, his head just feels too bulky. Feels like he's gonna tip over and fall on his head. But I like the sword. I love swords, and I love the idea of, like, a sea samurai. Like, that's cool! So I just wish that it was, like, proportioned a little bit better. The way that some people draw it, though, I think it looks a little... It looks a little more proportional. Oh my god, speaking of proportions in Pokemon, I just watched, like, a whole video on the Pokemon Company and, like, um, design scale in games and, like... Um, how Pokemon has been, like, a lot of people act like each Pokemon game in the newer gens is uniquely bad compared to the last one, when Pokemon has been running into troubles of scale since, like, Emerald, and they need to make Pikachu fat again. Uh, I have good news for you. I have fat Pikachu right here, but I absolutely agree with you. Why does everyone hate my boy? He was just bonked as a child. Who? Who? Hate who? fatter. I can draw really fat Pikachu. I have a Pikachu that I was going to do for a sticker, actually, that has, like, a piece of cake um, that was, like, very rotund. I love fat Pikachu. Black and white have always been my fa- Oh, 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 back to the scale thing. Sorry, I have to say this. This isn't important, but I wanted to say your art and streams have made me feel less bad about still being stupidly invested in Pokemon as a 20-something. Oh, please, I'm not going anywhere. I, I've been autistic my whole life. I'm going to be a Pokemon fan until the day I die, I'm pretty sure. Because it doesn't even matter if the games are, like, something I want to play, right? Like, the format and the creatures will always be the same. So there might be some generations that I don't like as many much as others, but, like, the concept, like, the core concept of Pokemon is still there. Um... Pokemon is far, far from the worst thing you could be into. Oh, absolutely. It is, like, it's very tame. Also, the thing is, I really don't believe there are interests that people are too old to have as long as they're acting appropriately, appropriately about those interests, right? Like, 
I know people rag on like bluey adults and I think that some of it comes from like the adults are acting inappropriate in what is basically like a children's space and that I understand but like some of it is also just people being assholes to other people for having interests that they believe are too childish and it's like it doesn't really matter it's all based off like how you act and how you treat how you act within those spaces like are you aware of the target audience of those spaces and are you acting appropriately do you know typhlosion is 5 7 he's only an inch taller than me and it's his sway in form loses four inches manlet have felt super comforted by your investment in pokemon as an adult and as an my being an, an adult and still super into Pokemon is something I feel a little self-conscious about. Oh, I... Well, yeah, you can 100% enjoy stuff made for kids, but you gotta remember it's for kids first. That's how I feel when people, like, try to, like, lecture me on my team building in the Pokemon games. Like, this has happened a few times on main, right? And it's part of the reason why I did eventually make a personal, um, personal Tumblr account. It's because I will post the team that I'm using in a Pokemon game, and... I will be like, I'm really excited, like I'm doing a theme team, I'm gonna do like a circus theme team in Pokemon Pearl, and some chuckle fuck, some clown, some absolute jester will come into my comic se comment section and be like, why are you using Pachirisu? That's such a well-balanced team with Pachirisu, um, I hope that it dies. I'm like, wow, did you know maybe that this game that's literally programmed and designed for 10 year olds is actually really easy for me to play because I'm 25 years old and I've been playing it since I was 10 years old so I know about the mechanics of the game that I've been playing since I was 10 years old and I can win with the Pachirisu? Did you consider that? And I don't even... Like, these people are not evil. They're not devils. They just... They get so deep into the metagame of... Pokemon that they forget that part of Pokemon is just you're supposed to have fun and play with the Pokemon that you like and figure out how to make them win. And I know that they're just trying to be smart guy, wise guy, asshole, but like every single time without fail, it drives me nuts. Um, that said, I still love making Pokemon teams and like theme teams. I just, I feel like people who act like that forget that the game is also made for, like, literal children to win, and that if, <laughs> if you need to play with, like, competitively viable Pokemon for the main campaign of the story, or else you can't have fun, I just feel like you're not, you, like, what are you doing, dude? I beat Gardenia with a Pachirisu with Super Fang, like, it is not that hard. Anyway, that's my little rant on that. So I forgot how much I liked the design that I made for uh, my trainer Sona's like coat thing or like sweater, because I if this was real and it was like the texture that I'm imagining it to be, where it's like kind of soft and like heavy, like almost knitted, um, but knitted with like non scratchy and like uh, non heat. Like, not, like, fibers that aren't really hot, if you know what I mean. Who's, who is the ace in your trainer Sona's team? Um, hold on, I do have a picture of their team. I don't really have an ace, but I do have a few Pokemon that are kind of like... Oh, wait, I do have the big picture with all of them. Wait, where is it? I just saw it. There it is, there it is. I have this here. Oh, I gotta pull it over, though. Um, like I said, I don't really have an ace. I do have a starter. Uh, can't do, wait espresso oh oh the brownies not scott pilgrim advertising skincare get off my comfy autism drawing stream um but yeah i i have this i this is like a work in progress i need to finish lining it but because the sketch was like so clean i'm terrified to line it because i don't think that like i'm i'm scared it's gonna go backwards right the sketch is so good that i'm like what if it looks bad when i line it um so, like, I I don't have an ace. I maybe, like, maybe Togekiss would be my ace because it's always with me because it's my flyer. But then when I do Battle Tower, I take Ampharos, Toge Togekiss, Dragonite, and Ninetales. And Dragonite's usually the one that sweeps. The only thing is that, like, sometimes Dragonite gets knocked out right away. And then that's when Togekiss comes in clutch. Sketch is banger. Thank you. I remember watching a Nuzlocke on YouTube recommended and someone live watching and reviewing a Nuzlocke and it was the most mystifying video I've ever seen. People get super deep. Oh, I love Nuzlocke. 
well, that's the other thing, right? Is like, people are like, oh, you can't win the game with such and such a Pokemon. And I'm sitting here like, I have literally nuzlocked multiple Pokemon games and one with like Raticate. Like it is not, we're playing very different games here. I'm playing because I like to learn how to use things that shouldn't be, or like were not intended to be used the way that I'm using them. Honestly, just cleaning up the sketch with a little bit of weight. Oh, it could, it definitely could work. And it, a normal person would do that. I, on the other hand, if I know it's a sketch and it's not line art, I will look at that piece and every single time my like skin will crawl because I'm like, I didn't line it. It's not real. It's not real. And then everyone else is like, oh, I love your lines. And I'm like, it's not, it's not lines. It's a sketch. I'm a fake artist. I'm a hack. I'm a fraud. Oh, so sorry. I see the hydrate imposter check. A little bit, I'll be real. My hydrate's not going to work for much longer because I'm almost out of water. I think I'm using nicer blues for this one. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I did brown line art instead of using blue line art, but something about the colors is just... is a little different this time, but it looks nice. <laughs> Wait, my boyfriend just texted me. Same as the young ones. I feel like I got my baby me. Could have ranger team. Babe, you can come in. You can come in and ask the question. He's texting me because he doesn't want to interrupt stream. He's being very polite. I just started cleaning up sketches because I don't like doing line art. That's, um, oh my god, I'm being drowned again? Oh, summon boyfriend. I'm I'm telling him to come in. Everyone's summoning forest. Um. He's saying he's comfy. <laughs> They're summoning you. Guest appearance from a famous Twitch Twitch streamer, Shovelbug. Speaking of Twitch streams, hey, hey, everyone that's here now and is watching, uh, key key jangle, key jangle, key jangle. Uh, tomorrow we're playing we're playing Lethal Company. We're playing Lethal Company and it's being streamed on my boyfriend's Twitch channel, Key Jangle. Please, everyone, come watch us play. Ooh, keys, ooh, keys. You're listening. You're interested in what I'm saying. Come watch us play Lethal Company on my boyfriend's channel, Shovelbug, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It's gonna be me and my friend Ra and possibly our friend Nick and my boyfriend and we're gonna die and it's gonna be really fun it's gonna be 7 p.m look look I even I'm even hold up key jangle oh not that layer uh key jangle I even drew something for it I drew the beginnings of a promo piece that I still have to line but don't pay attention to that see pretty are you coming in because I'm excited I like lethal I want people to come I'm, it's, I listen. also know your computer will probably blow up if you tried to also stream Lethal Company. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be the person streaming it. My laptop can't handle playing a game and streaming it at the same time. I just zoned out and all I heard was me and my boyfriend are going to die. Yes, <laughs> with the power of love. Oh, I need to get closer so that I can't see shit. What was your question, though? I saw you asking about your team. I just couldn't read the text from over my shoulder. Oh, it was just hi, hi. Um... So our, like, older gym sonas and yeah. the baby is singing. And these guys, Aww. they're they, the same. Yeah, but they have different teams. Remember, because I yes. I made my guy... It wasn't processing that I could have a different team. Oh, yeah. So I'm just like, well, what about my, what about my, like, my guys, like, Arcanine Ampharos? You have, the, you can have those as a... Oh, I can design the regional variant. So to fill everyone in so that you know what we're talking about, Forrest and I have trainer sonas as these little babies, but we also have the adult versions of the trainer sonas that I plan to redraw after I'm done with these, um, that are, uh, well, originally mine was a gym leader and his was the champion of a fake Pokemon region, but we decided to change it so that we're both gym leaders. So, you know, making yourself a champion feels like a little big headed. And I mean, you were the one who did that. But I was going to say, I did that to him and I, he was like self-conscious about it. So I did, I was going to say, this is my gym leader self and so we decided that Forrest would also be a gym leader um since I was the ghost type gym leader we're gonna make him the electric type gym leader and I was going to do a regional variant of Arcanine since I already did a regional variant of uh Ninetales 
And the other reason that we wouldn't make us double trainers at the same gym is because I like ghost types, and I don't think you're a ghost type guy. Not really. No, Forrest really likes all the dogs. So we were going to... Our gyms were going to be... I'm a uh, comic artist, and the gym is like a haunted art studio. So all of the people that are in the gym have ghost type Pokemon that are like object ghost type Pokemon. Um, or like ghost type Pokemon that are like inanimate objects or like things that could look like Gorgeist because it's a pumpkin and when you're painting you paint apples and pumpkins or at least the my painting teacher made me paint apples and pumpkins like 500 times shush shush um oh thank you for coming Lisa Mwah. see you on Saturday oh well and so Forrest is um his gym was gonna be like a dog agility course so you would have to run around and the whole idea of the gym is like you would battle a trainer and then before the battle you would have your pokemon race so you would have to call out whoever your fastest pokemon was to see if they won the race and if they were faster than your opponent's pokemon then you could skip that battle but if you weren't faster then you would have to do the battle see you on saturday boyfriend not a no 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 no. i was saying see you on saturday to my best my my high school best friend was in the chat <laughs> Well, and I was, so for the ghost gym, painting the ghosts of inanimate objects, I thought it would be funny because they would technically be still lives considering they are objects. That was scary without the line art. Was it? Oh yeah, it is kind of scary. <laughs> um, so since ghosts, the ghost Pokemon are all possessing inanimate objects, it technically would be a still life, but because it's a comic studio, they're like still lives, but they're moving. So they have to do like action shots of like vases and <laughs> and swords we'll probably head out for the night some ep see you solar pops thank you for coming dog show gym is kind of tight that's what i was thinking i thought it'd be really fun like you i feel like pokemon gyms one of the things that i miss so much is when pokemon gyms were like puzzles or like they had some kind of like interactive game within the gym itself and so you doing a game that's based Brings off my dog to worst agility course is a huge flying eel. I well, I was gonna say Farce other Pokemon is or Pokemon that he likes is Electros. So he was thinking of his team being all dogs and then like in elect Electros. <laughs> I saw so many people complain about the ice floor in Gen 3, and I'm like, why? I like puzzle gyms. I really like them. I first found you on TikTok because of the gym leaders. I was looking around at the gym leader sonas and found you, and I couldn't stop thinking about your art. Now we are here. We are nice. Electros win. Ghost Willow and Normal Forest. I do you like normal types? Yeah. I was gonna say every time you're like, this is a Pokemon I like. Without fail, it's either a Fire, Electric, or like. Well, Tyranitar breaks that trend because he's... I really like Tyranitar. I know you like Tyranitar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tyranitar is cute. I used it for the first time in a run, and I have become endeared to it, too. I also love Godzilla, though, so, like, it wasn't hard for me to like Tyranitar. I just had never considered it before you said it was your favorite. And then I was like, well, if he likes it, clearly there's something good about it, so I have to figure out what it is, and, and I see it completely now. Oh, he's just beastie. Yeah, well, I so I didn't want him to be a pup Pupitar, because I think that Pupitar, I'm sorry, is kind of ugly. Um, so I kept my Larvitar, uh, like a Larvitar, up until level 54. Uh, and I fought Lance's Charizard and two Dragonites with Larvitar. And it killed them. It worked. It, and I only had to heal, like, one time, because I got hit by an Outrage. But it tanked it. I, I was impressed. Your trainer designs are so gorgeous. Thank you. Did you just sub? To me? Oh, here it is. I kind of do it on mobile. How did you do that? I have a Prime sub. Oh, never mind. To me? Yes. You pay for it? No, with Prime, you get a free sub. Oh, I'm a dumbass. I was trying to do the hype train thing. Aw, thank you. Oh, wait, what color are your sleeves? Oh, they're white. Oh, you took away the forest puppet. That's okay, I wasn't here the whole time. The what? The little forest puppet. Oh, because you weren't in here, honey. Yeah. I was only keeping it up for streams that you were sitting next to me so that people would know who's talking when you when it wasn't me. 
At some point, I'm going to have to redraw our tubers so that they're more similar style to each other. What was the forest puppet? It was like my little- here, I can pull, put him on there. I, my little VTuber had a little forest puppet in my hand so that anytime he talked, it could be both of us talking. If, I, if it lets me dress. Hello. There we go. Hiding underneath line art. See? Puppet forest. <laughs> oh, thank you for the sub coffin, Mick. Holy crap, this has been a crazy sub night. This is awesome. I'll have to make um some emotes as thanks because I feel like now that there are so many subs here, I gotta I gotta give back. I don't think us well your hair's like a little darker. It's like a chestnut. You have a live model right now. I know. Me. I know I know <laughs> what you look like. I love that Forrest is just Snoopy. He is Forrest, I every time I get Sanrio stuff, I and it's like clothing item. Well, he's also KK Slider, right? I got Forrest a KK Slider shirt. Uh, I think he reminds me of KK Slider, Snoopy, and Pochaco. I'm trying to think if there's any other dogs. Gajinkas and I think they're cool. As the creator of like a furry universe, I would never want to set Gajinkas for my characters because I don't know who would relate to those characters. And I want to have the door open so that if someone sees themselves in Laika or sees themselves in Mars, that it's not like a closed door, right? It's it's like the inverse of what happened. I just poked a lamp. The inverse of what happened on Twitter like a few years ago, where people would do like drawings of anime characters or like other existing characters and things and like draw them with either darker skin than they had or like different hair textures and people will get like really really hostile to them i don't want that to happen so i want it to be that anyone can draw the first characters any way that they like so that i can like the the guy with the open arms and like all the arrows going into his back i want to protect people who want to make a jingas that look like them Oh, people are so fucking mean about blackwashing. That's like, that's what I wanted to prevent, right? Like, I wanted to make it so that people would not get harassed for that. Is it okay to draw human versions of like his characters if we're not very... Yeah, yeah, no, I love to see them. I've actually reblogged a few. Like I said, when I reblog them, I like want... I, none of them are canon, but all of them are... That's maybe not the word I want to use. To, none of them are what I have created, but all of them could be canon. Does that make sense? Black edits are cool? Absolutely. Absolutely they are. That's why I tried- that's why I went out of my way to have black coded characters, because I wanted to be very deliberately clear that, like, there are- I want people to know there are people that look like them in my comic, so that they know that they're welcome. But you can- for the characters that are, like, not coded deliberately, please do whatever you want. Sir, like Miku, exactly like Miku, exactly like Miku. The <laughs> little forest puppy. Brain rot was at an all-time high. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to take Mars and make the Mexican. You are more than welcome to. I've seen so many really cute Marses, like, as a person. It's been lovely, because I think that's the thing, right? Part of me not having an idea of what they looked like in my head is that getting to see what they looked like to other people has been so wonderful. You know, well, I think you'll know Lycus Comet has really made it when you get Warrior Cats versions of them. Uh, I have thought about this so, so, so much. So, so, so much. Does Pokemon Warrior Cats exist? Like, in the Pokemon universe, is there a Warrior Cats adjacent franchise of, like, cat Pokemon or, like, Eevees, like, fighting to the death in the wild? I think about this constantly, because there's Pokemon furries, right? Like, we know... We know that there are Pokefans that are essentially like furries in the Pokemon universe. So Pokemon Warrior Cats has to exist. It has to be a thing. 
there's gotta be, exactly. They form packs on the schoolyard and everything. Well, the, here's the thing, I did that. Like, all of my friends in elementary school were into Warrior Cats, and I proposed, I was like, so what if we did Warrior Cats, but like, Pokemon instead? So then we were Pokemon, and then we would throw rocks at each other, and spit. That's how we fought. Elementary schoolers are interesting creatures. <laughs> no normal Earth animals were your cats. Oh yeah, I did a little drawing of Mars. Is it okay if I post the link? Absolutely. I love to see- and I was gonna say, if I miss it, please don't be ashamed to repost it more than once because, like, chat goes so fast sometimes while I'm drawing that I miss stuff. But I- if people draw art, especially if they draw art of my characters, I want to see. Like, I try to go out of my way to reblog everything. I- I follow the like us comment tag with an apostrophe, the like us comment tag without an apostrophe, the like us comment tag with a different apostrophe because there's two different apostrophes on Tumblr for whatever ungodly reason. I'm opening it now. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh my god, this is so pretty. I really like your shading style. It has almost like a geometric, like, painterly look to it. I, I want to say that it looks almost like a gemstone, if that makes sense, but it's really, really nice. There's, like, there's so much texture. Yes, there are different apostrophes on Tumblr, I don't know why. Um, but because of that, I follow all of those tags, so that if anyone ever posts Laika's Comet art, or it posts or anything, I will be able to see it. Is Laika's name inspired off that one dog that was sent into space? Yes, and also, there was going to be a scene about that in Chapter 2, but it got cut because of time and not fitting the tone of the rest of the chapter but uh i talked about it with my ko-fi members and i talked about it with my boyfriend and some of my other like beta readers and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm going to render that scene and there's going to be a short hiatus between the end of chapter two and the beginning of chapter three and that's when i'm going to release that as like a little bonus episode of sorts and if Lycus does get printed or gets published because of the actions I'm taking to try and get that published with someone, it will be like a sort of bonus episode at the end of book one. Um, talking about like Lyca the Ash Lyca the Cosmonaut versus like a main character Lyca and how they are sort of like adjacent. I was gonna say, I don't know if it'll happen. I really hope it does. Uh someone someone reached out to me on tumblr when they saw that i was po like talking about publication and trying to do a kickstarter to publish it myself and was like hey um this is something that i actually like do or like i'm involved in and i'd be happy to answer questions and help you if you have anything and like gave me their email i waited a bit to email back because i wanted one it came to me during the holidays and two i wanted to really like think about it and like make sure i was like asking what i wanted to ask so I finally like fired it off uh, earlier this week and waiting to hear back. Hydrate. I actually think I'm all out of water. I have no water to drink. Empty. What 100%? I would purchase my own book. I want, I want to be able to slap my comic book down on the table in front of people that doubted me. And also this is Wind Temple Phase 1 from Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to answer your song question. <laughs> no, succulent streamer is going to fade away. I am. I'm going to wither away and die. Also, something I'm realizing looks different between the original drawing of my trainer and this one here is that I didn't give myself enough of an eyelid. I think I need to even make that smaller because I've shrunk it down so many times. I didn't give myself enough, like, an upper eyelash, and I didn't give myself enough of an eyelid. I just don't want to overdo it and have it come off too, like, noisy. That might be it, though. Yeah, that's good. Well, that one is a little too high up. That's better, that's better. Um, I think I made the strap light blue, if I remember correctly, but I'm gonna do forest legs first. I really like the two color palettes next to each other, too. Like, I feel like they... This is one of my better, like, Pokemon-based designs. I think the Diamond Pearl Trainers that I did are awesome, and I'm really excited to do the Platinum Trainer. I've got to go for the evening, but thanks for everything. Thank you for coming, Serene Sparks. And thank you for coming always. You have been in here, like, every single time. Your trainer Sona did look less tired. 
like like as comet being schooled at, sold at school book fairs y you would laugh see but that's literally what um the person said to me they were like I know you've said before that like this is an all ages comic and you've been wanting to get like an audience of different people if you go through traditional publishing uh like networks it they have like back end connections with all libraries, bookstores, and scholastic fairs. So it's likely that Lycus would be put in like school book fairs and like bookstores. And I'm like, that would actually be kind of sick. I can't lie. It would be really cool. I remember like the joy of seeing new comics at, like every time the book fair rolled around. And like the idea of being able to recreate that feeling with my own book, like comic for someone else, it just unmatched, unparalleled feeling. Well, I also, I hate to say it this way, but I feel like the uh, queer content, the queer content in Laika's is not, like, hidden or, like, not there from the beginning. But I think because it's not the focus of the story, if someone, the homophobic parents that are looking for it will probably miss it, and the kids that need it will be able to see it, because... I hate to say it, but the more and more things are becoming censored, the more kids are going to need, like, positive queer and trans and gay stories and ones that they can access without being ripped away from by their parents. So that is part of the reason, too, I think that, like, as would be, I would be proud for it to be distributed because I think it would do good in that sense. Your stream gives off the vibes of something I could watch while, while drawing, eating a nice cake and trying gua gosh paint. Okay, gauche, gouache, I know what that paint is. I've used it before, but I don't know how to pronounce it. But <laughs> thank you, Cat Sauce, that's really sweet. A lot of, I've had a lot of people say that they draw while watching the stream. What's the point of creating if you don't try to replicate the feeling of wonder you felt when enjoying comics and animations art related? I agree. Lakers comments showed up in bookstores near me. I would explode happily. I would, I would love it. Okay, I'll be so real. The biggest, biggest like chest banging, like awesome dance feeling. I don't know. The thing that would be coolest feeling. Gouache. I pronounce it gouache, but my teacher says gouache. 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 Interesting. I want to. Sorry. I want to show my my family that I got that I made a comic and that I actually have a book because I've I told this story on a stream a while ago but part of the reason that it took me so long to start writing comics is that um my mom was very very against me writing comics and in air quotes wasting time on it and because of it uh, it took me a long time to think of comics as something that was worth putting a lot of time into because I was like, you know, no one's going to like them anyway, so what's the point of putting all this time and effort into something that basically would only be for me and be kind of, like, self-indulgent? Um, <laughs> every time you stream, I run to my computer be to draw because I don't know how, but your drawings and conversations give me the most inspiration ever. That's, like, I mean, that's huge to me because I love when anyone learns to draw, so I'm glad to inspire it in other people, too. Well, so she, I don't, like, I, again, I try not to, like, go, go over it over and over again. I was a pretty, like, I was an academic in school. I did a sport. I worked jobs at the same time. So I did have a lot going on, but all of these things were things that my mom wanted me to do. So I would do all of those things and then still manage to have time to like write comics and draw and stuff because it's basically all I did other than doing those things. Like I would finish my homework, I would get done with swimming and then immediately I would start drawing and I would just not rest until I had the ability to draw because it's it was so important to me and it still is very important to me. Um, so I would do these comics and I would get like 30 page one shots, 20 page one shots, or like the first chapter of like a uh, concept that I had done. And then I would show her. And I remember it was one time where I had done like 45 and keep in mind, when I used to do comics, I did all hand-drawn, like, on paper. I did not do digital art for the longest time. 
Streamer, remember if you toe the line, you will definitely get a job, so it's worth it to ruin your entire childhood if possible. Don't have mental illness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, with the comic that I, I did, it was like a, f sorry, I lost track where it was. I used to draw on paper, I used to hand draw comics, and so it was a very big time commitment and like commitment of effort to do stuff to that scale. It was, when I did a 45 page comic, um, it's like the first chapter of something I wanted to be more long standing. I showed my mom and I, she, I remember her like opening the comic and she read like the first few panels and immediately she just like, I don't know like the right word to use. I don't want to say sigh because it was like a lot angrier than that. Like a, like a really disgusted sound and just like slammed it on the table. And I kind of like looked at her like taken aback. Yeah. Like a scoff. And I, and she was like, I'm not reading this. You know, I don't like this trans stuff because the main character used they, them pronouns. And I was just sitting there and I was thinking like, you're not even going to read the story. You shut down immediately because you see someone in it that you think you don't like. Why am I listening to what you have to say about, like, why am I listening to your creative input when you wouldn't even consider something that, like, is slightly different than you? Because I, you know, I grew up with her input on my art all the time. Like, why do you spend so much time drawing animals? Why do you spend so much time drawing cartoons? Why do you spend, why don't you do still lives? Why don't you do portraits why don't you draw me and so it was like that moment where i was like i've been listening to someone that not only doesn't care about my happiness or well-being but doesn't even have like close to adjacent interests to mine so is clearly not the target demographic of the story that i'm trying to tell and i've been killing myself and beating myself up because of that because of you when will the color when when will colors with a small size brush? I like to. It's soothing. It's fun. It's relaxing. I know that I can color with a bigger brush, but I enjoy coloring with a tiny one. Um, Jamie, me, me when I realize I've been doing this to myself. Well, that's coming back from from the ad to killing myself and beating myself up. Just found your stream. Twitch recommended me to you, and I'm so glad it did. I'm a huge Pokemon fan, and your style reminds me of the old GBA art, and I love drawing Pokemon so much. Yes! More Pokemon artist flexing. Is the background music playlist somewhere I might be able to access? Yes, it is. Let me send the link. I played the same one last stream, um, but I think it's good, so I like listening to it. It's all basically like winter-themed video game music. Here you go. I use the word emotions instead of emojis. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, oh lord, I keep losing my train of thought because I keep getting distracted. Mm. It's whatever, it's fine. Basically, the end of that story was just like, I realized that when it comes to writing comics, and when it comes to making art especially, you can't draw for the audience of people that you're worried will have the strongest like negative opinions. At the end of the day, you have to draw what you like to draw because it makes you happy and practicing and pushing yourself does come in with that naturally because if you're doing something that you enjoy you'll want to improve at it so that you can do what you love better whereas if you try to draw what you think people will want to see and you think will get you the less the least amount of flack you're gonna wind up feeling like trapped like you're gonna feel stagnant and unhappy all the time and so even though I wound up throwing away like most of my comics as a kid, and I do really regret that, I think that I needed to have that final like last push of rejection to realize that if I'm going to write something, my primary audience should be myself, and then after that, I should remember that by writing for some writing something that I like and writing for myself, I'm going to attract people that like similar things to me. When we're in full spring right now, the plants are being tricked. Oh, because of the winter? Oh, it's for February. That's smart. Mm -hmm. There we go. I might do the rest of Forest Pocket later. Hmm, but do I shade their faces? Because I did shade the other one. I think I might, honestly. At least, like, just the noses. 
Oh, but you know what? I am going to do a little cheatsy. Just so that it's a little easier on my wrist. So if I select these areas and then I do all the same color, I can just kind of come in here and do this. There we go. No zoom out. The only problem is those little lines make it so hard for me to see anything. Um, actually, it might make it darker? Maybe? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, posture check. You caught me. I was shrimping. I was getting so close to the screen. A similar thing, but ultimately, no matter how good your art is, there will always be people who will dislike your art. You need to stand your ground and keep doing your thing, yes, while also not vilifying people for their opinions. Well, something else, too. I've, like, taken such a... I don't want to say neutral, because I don't think that's the right word. When it comes to art, I have taken the stance of, like, there, all art has a right to exist on the basis that I want people to be able to draw what fulfills them most and what makes them happy. And just because I don't like something or I don't understand it doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. So instead of not liking an art, I have found instead that it's transformed into like, I have developed my own taste for the things that I like to consume. And sometimes I go out of my way to consume things that and like engage with things that I wouldn't even consider my taste because I think it's a good experience. But I would also encourage other people that when they see things that they don't like, that obviously aren't like harmful, like uh, oppressive, I'm like blanking on the word. <laughs> things that are not hateful to human beings for simply existing as the human beings they are. I would encourage them to consider for a second why their reaction is so strong and whether or not it would be easier to just not engage with it and allow that person to keep doing their own thing. Bigoted, thank you. Like, there, there is a lot of furry art that I truly do not like, and not because it depicts anything that's, like, nefarious or illegal or, like, harmful, but truly just because I don't like how it looks. I think that it does not fulfill what I would want out of art, and I find that when I do furry art personally, I want to push the medium and the the topic of it a little more than some people do and because of that that the type of art that i don't usually like is one that feels repetitive or it feels like kind of unfulfilling when i look at it i don't get anything out of it are you australian too are you asking me i am not australian um laissez fair art appreciation is a really good way of putting it um but the reason I took this stance of, like, even if I don't like something, it has the right to exist, is after I got kind of, like, there was some guy on, on Instagram and TikTok who, I've talked about him a few times, used my art to kind of stir controversy because he was having trouble selling merch, and I didn't realize it at the time. Um, but he said it at a really terrible time. It was right as um, Forrest's mom had passed and we had to move. So emotionally, I was not doing very well. And then in comes this guy that's got like 25,000 more followers than me, just absolutely ragging on my art and also accusing me of doing things that I don't do at all. Like in the video, he had said like, oh, I hate when people beg for likes and followers. And I'm just sitting here like I actively go out of my way not to try and attract people in because I get like anxious. Well, and the thing is, I don't even, like, hate him. I just find he, he's a child, so I need to give a disclaimer for that. He did not have his age listed, but he was 17 when this all happened. Um, I don't, it was, I'm not going to name drop in the chat because it's not productive to do that at this point. And really, all that I would hope is that this guy, like, changes and he stops doing this to people. Because I'm not the only artist that he did it to. Um, but when... I brought it up that this was like a really rough time of my life a lot of and that like this had really hurt my feelings a lot of people were like responding to what I said of like oh are you butt hurt because someone doesn't like your art and I was just sitting here and I'm like no I was actually just more hurt that someone would accuse me of something that I don't do and then imply that my art is like 
lazy or shallow somehow, because you can not like my art all you want, but you have to at least admit that I put time and effort and love into what I make. Because cause that's it, right? Like, it's not liking your art, it's being disrespectful to it. That's the part that really got me. Um, and there was so much more that went on with it, but I just, it doesn't even do any good to beat that dead horse anymore. I just remember that was really what opened my eyes up to the, even if I don't like someone's art and if I find it boring or repetitive or like it annoys me to see it, I still have to respect it. I have to understand that for them to continue drawing it and to continue putting love and time into it, it's important to them. So I need to respect it. And so even though that whole situation sucked and it happened at like really one of the worst times for me mentally and emotionally, it did teach me something important. And that's at least, that at least is something good. So that's the silver lining for me there. You can dislike things without disrespecting and being an asshole to the people that make them. There are lots of things on the internet that I don't like, and I make an effort to remember that those things all have a human heart behind them. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and it's, again, what kills me is that people will go out of their way to be cruel to people that aren't even doing things that, like, hurt anyone. I, I get not liking something. I get thinking that something comes off as kind of shallow, but, like, you don't know that it is. You don't know what, how much depth is behind it. So to assume that is just, sh I don't know, short-sighted and goofy. Sorry if this is off topic, but how do you shade? Do you make a multiply layer? Nope. No, I just pick the colors. I find that um by doing, like, and no shame to anyone that does use multiply layers, but for me personally, I try to color like I would color if I was um, drawing traditionally by like picking the colors almost as if out of a box of crowns or like um, markers. Um, and my reasoning for that is because I want to keep my eye trained for colors and color picking. Um, I also feel like it gives a much more vibrant look to the colors that I use. Um, Sorry, speaking of which, I wanted to make the shading on far skin a little darker. Yeah, there we go. Um, but no, I do not. I just color pick. Hi, popping in to say you're a huge, huge inspiration to me. Like his comic, Comet is the first comic I've been excited about, and your art never fails to appease my eyes. Hope you have a great night and wish you the best. Thank you so much, an art person. That is very sweet. Crayons? Why is everyone saying crowns? Why is everyone say- <laughs> No! Why is everyone saying crowns? What's wrong? What's wrong? No, no. Why? <laughs> Why? You say it different. Thank you for pointing out the fact that I was born in Philadelphia. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can take the dog out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the dog. Or cat, now that I've transitioned. I have no idea. I just got here, but crayons. Sorry. It's crowns to me. I know that it's the, the proper way to say it is crayons, but it's crowns. It's crowns and commercial and flamingo. I know it's flamingo and commercial and crayons, but it's crowns, commercial, and flamingo to me. Do you have favorite colors? <laughs> I just got here. So crayons. <laughs> me too. No apologies. No apologies. Everyone kill him. Mod uprising. And sorry, to answer the favorite the answer the favorite colors question. I do really like green and I like light blue and I like cream and a lot of shades of brown. Um I don't dislike any colors really, but I find that purple is always the hardest for me to work with. And typically speaking, when I need to work with purple, I'll actually work with like a magenta or a maroon instead of using actual purple. Um, sometimes lavender can be really nice though, especially when paired with blue. Hi. Flamangos? Flamango. 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 It's not a mango. What are you? It's, I'm gonna... it's not a flamango either. <laughs> it's a flamango. It's a flamingo. It's a flamingo. I have never heard anybody ever call it fucking flamingo. <laughs> well, you weren't born in Philadelphia, so that's your loss. I was born an hour outside of Philadelphia. That's not the same thing. I know people from Philly. I've never heard them say fucking flamingo. <laughs> I think that's just a youth thing. No, it's not. My grandmother says it. 
your grandmother does not say flamingo. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Literally ask her what the animal is called next time we see her, and she will say it that way. She also says commercial, and she also says crown. I think you're lying. I'm not lying. Dude, she raised me. If I learned it from anyone, it was her. OMG, wait, Forrest. I have Philadelphian friends. <laughs> you're being accused of Philly faking. I want a mango now. I'm from the South, so I can't poke fun at anybody's accents. Yeah, my problem is that I bounced around like a, so much as a kid like a drawing. that my accent is all over the place. Like a, I want it to load. I want it to... Oh, it's so cute. I love this. It's so cute. And I love the colors. And I love her little mouth. Brainwashed by Grams. My grandmother could never brainwash me. I'm too contrarian. I just admired her. <laughs> There's a difference. Me willingly choosing to be like someone who's strange and being brainwashed are not the same thing. Basically, I like your funny words, old woman. <laughs> I think this redraw, I, like, it's still definitely a colored sketch, but I think this looks really nice. And it it captures the feeling that the old drawing had very well, but it's like a very clear update from the last one. Although I think it's funny, I made my hair spikier than I made it in the the first drawing. I have no idea why. It wasn't intentional. I think I just draw my hair spikier now because my hair's less curly. It's more like... The it... eyes also aren't as big. Yeah, the eyes aren't as big. You're right. I think I really like that, though. Oh yeah, I'm not... That's objective. Yeah. Like, just that's different about how you're drawing this one. That wasn't on purpose either. Oh my god, the chest going so fast. Canadian, South, Southern. Amazing, thank you for sharing. We're learning all the accents. The colors do look a lot punchier. That's actually something that I... I had a TikTok that was on it a while ago. Something about getting mental health assistance or just like becoming less depressed makes my colors better. Because I look at my colors from when I was in college, and they all look very, like, washed out, gray, neutral tones. And slowly, as Forrest and I met and started dating, my colors have become more and more vibrant. I don't think this means I'm going to get into, like, neons and, like, eye bleed colors as I get happier with my life conditions. But I do think that it's interesting how, like, drastically my colors jump within like a year. I also think I learned how to use them better. Like, even though I do have pastel values and like lighter values in this piece, I feel like the ones that are more saturated are saturated where they needed to be. I can't redeem it, but posture check. Oh, how did you guys, how do you know? Also, I'm out of water. May I have some water? Yes. Thank you. I want to be good. Everyone keeps trying to drown me, and I can't because I already drowned myself too much. Are you a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I have never seen or done anything Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, really. I got beat over the head with a plastic one once. It's okay, because I'm a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I know you are. Yeah, I got in a basement. My friend's little brother beat me over the head with his plastic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and then he said sorry because he said I meant to hit your sister, actually. So... I, you know, I did appreciate the apology, even though the violence was not intended for me, it was intended for someone else. A typical basement activity. D you know, this is the real re- D Wait, Farce, don't leave. What's the best turtle? I'll ask him when he comes back, but I think his favorite's Donnie. Um, the one downside to Laika's Comet being set in a universe where Laika and everyone is are like adults is that I will never in this universe get to write what being a child being sent to the basement while the Thank adults you. are hanging out is like. Thank you, honey. They ask you what your favorite turtle is. God, what's the clip? The clip. <laughs> we can all be Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I, I said I, he left, but I'm pretty sure his favorite is Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> prequel basement one shot well it won't be a prequel there is going like i said firth has multiple iterations there is the Lycus comet version of firth and then there's firth c which is basically like no comet happens no supernatural events occur and 
Characters from Laika's Comet will be present on Firth Sea, even though most Firth Sea stories are not like, they are not going to be about the main cast. They get their time to shine in Laika's Comet. But, like, they do appear as background characters. And I sometimes draw, like, uh, like nice domestic stuff of them. Because I have to relieve the myself after writing particularly sad scenes. I'm not cool enough to be Mikey. <laughs> Instead of beach episodes, we should have basement episodes. Well, there is actually a beach episode of Laika's Comet. I'm not kidding. There is both a beach and a festival episode. And the thing is, I am only saying that on stream because I won't say it on the official comic like site or like Tumblr because they are plot relevant and they're like actually there is not going to be well, no, there is actually technically a training arc. There's no tournament though. Um, but there is technically a training arc. Um, that said, they are plot relevant, so I don't think anyone's going to notice that they are like a beach episode, but I've always loved like the anime beach episode, the Valentine's sh Like, I was a shoujo enjoyer before I was a sign-in enjoyer, so of course I would like the fluffy episodes. I think they're fun. But I think that the important part of fluffy episodes is that they weren't pointless. They very often de developed underdeveloped side characters or int introduced new interesting concepts to the pre-existing concept when they were done well, which is what I tried to do with Lycus Comet at least. Are you listening to me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm trying to make sure you can't hear me munch the cereal. Oh. All right, I would still get a physical copy of Lakers if you ever do that. I would love to. And it's just nice to see the characters in different contexts. Exactly, exactly. What if Mars gets sent to the basement? That does happen. It is fun. Wait, sorry. Have you watched Studio Ghibli? Yes, Lemon B Art. One of my favorite like movie studios i love satoshi Kon's movies and i love studio ghibli and there's a lot of other like movie animated movies that i love too but like the most the ones i watch most consistently are those two um also i saw let me get a message i love fluff i love filler i love manga and anime expanding on their characters and not being the story grind 24 7 very real realest thing ever well that's the thing right okay there was a- I reblogged the post, but there was a Tumblr user whose username is, uh, Keely, or it's like K-I-L-L-Y. They made a post talking about how someone- while I understand what the original poster was saying, and I didn't take it as much offense to it, so they were getting annoyed that someone had said that Dungeon Meshi is a story that doesn't waste any of its scenes and doesn't have anything that's not plot relevant and they were getting frustrated because it's like part of what makes dungeon meshi good is that it doesn't uh, it develops its universe so well in a way that it doesn't seem like it cares if things are plot relevant and things do wind up being important but it gives itself time to like dilly dally and so i read that and i was thinking about it and i was like i think that this there's this like sentiment among fan bases that shows that take time to rest or take time to dilly dally are like wasting time somehow or that it's like bad that they take things slow but in reality i think that like wasting scenes and plot irrelevance don't have to be the same thing also welcome in nerdy bird we're talking about like story writing right now but currently i'm drawing my pokemon trainer sona and my boyfriend's pokemon trainer sona while we talk um, basically the sentiment that I have after reading Killy's post and read in like the original post that I had seen too, I think that people have a really hard time assessing what is actually plot relevant and assessing what is a necessary and unnecessary scene. And also I think that people should be a little less scared to allow, allow themselves to write things that feel unnecessary because you a good writer at least or someone that really loves their universe and their characters finds ways to make those things character relevant like yes it's probably not important for me to point out the fact that miku or that miku that Leica likes miku it's probably not important for me to mention the fact that like that yoe likes dating games and like has otome games on his computer but the thing is they do kind of wrap back around in a way and like they might be not be like super seriously important but they do reflect yeah he does he has otome games on his uh laptop 
and his home computer before he wasn't able to get them anymore. And uh, because he's been stuck with the same games for like 20 years, he's like played all of them through multiple times and like has like root mechanic guides that he's written himself that no one else uses because he's the only one that he knows that has games. <laughs> he's so single! <laughs> God. Doomed Yowie. Doomed Yowie. That's like a that's like a greeting. We pass each other in the hallway and it's like Doomed Yowie to you. A very doomed Yowie to you. Um But I don't know, like uh, the other thing that I said on Killy's post that they agreed with, which I appreciate like I was glad that they saw. I think that people's ability to analyze or assess what is actually unnecessary is poor, typically. And even in real life, Things are not always, like, like stepping outside of fiction and storytelling. In real life, things are not happening all of the time. Even in the most high-paced, frantic, frightening times of my life, there have been times in between where we had to go sit in, like, the Burger King parking lot and eat. Because you have to eat. You have to sleep. You have to have moments to breathe in between, like the intense moments because otherwise you will just collapse and writing is the same way right like you you don't need to show every single thing your character does you don't need to show them eating going to the bathroom showering etc but but for the reader's sake and for the character's development there must be quieter moments in between the loud ones where the loud ones don't mean anything anymore they don't have any volume because everything is just blasted out the eardrums of your readers. Also, like, your characters have to matter to your readers, and if you just throw them immediately into peril, people don't know why they should care about them. Like, yes, it's- if you see someone and it's like, oh, my whole family's dead, it's like, okay, that's sad because that's a sad thing to write about. But if you take an entire chapter to establish that someone lives a content life and maybe has some dreams and has things they wanna see, and then they lose the things that were there for them that were comforting them, that is, that's sad. Oh, the JJK problem. That's sad, but I don't know you. Exactly, you have to get them invested. Also, please, for the love of God, if you're going to kill characters in your story, make the grieving process that your characters experience realistic. Char people do not just grieve for the appropriate amount of screen time and then move on and then only reminisce on them when it becomes, like, relevant to the plot. Characters are missed in ways that- characters and people are missed in ways that I feel like writers just do not know how to do. Like, you- a, I can use a personal example. I will be sitting at the table one day, eating something, scrolling through my phone, and there's something that I see, and I'm like, this is hilarious. I have to send this to, and the person that comes to mind is gone. I can't do that. It's so dumb. I'm sitting in, on, I'm like on my phone watching videos of animals, like cute animal videos, and right there in the middle of that normal moment of like, just boring nothingness, the mundane, I'm smacked in the head with intense waves of grief. That is what grieving is like, right? It's never gone, and we talked about this earlier, it does get smaller within you because all of your, the rest of your life grows bigger around it, but it does creep up on you in the moments that you least expect it. And I think that's one of the reasons why grief in fiction always frustrates me, because it, it feels it feels like fake food. It feels overly processed and easy to digest and completely, absolutely not real. And even I'm minding my business and thinking about my dead dog and start crying, it finds you like that. It always does. That's why you can't avoid it. You can't, tr you can't live a life without grief because you wouldn't have lived it at all anyway. If you live a life that's worth living, you'll live a life that has things that you'll grieve because eventually you'll lose them, but it's better than not having anything at all, you know? And I think this is still... No, that's too thick. 
I know I'm like cleaning this up so much for a doodle, but I think they're cute, so uh, I do what I want. My most disliked trait in stories is when they feel empty. Yes. That's something I've thought about. Well, if everybody loses somebody eventually, it's just part of being a person. Mm hmm. It is. Some people sooner than others. And I think that when that happens, those are the people that are here to help others become equipped for when it does happen eventually. I don't, I also think, I don't think anyone's prepared, right? Like you can know something's going to happen, but you never know how you're going to react until it does. I was literally moved to tears the other week because something in D &D, a D&D show reminded me of my grandma. I was just watching my shows and then it hit me all over again. Grieving is just so regular. Yes. I think I can zoom. I keep, sorry, I keep seeing like little white specks that I didn't color with the cream, which is the only color problem of using a color that's so close to white. That's like an off-white. Usually what I do is I'll color with something else and then I'll color it. Also, Forest Eye is bothering me now because it's not it's not connected, but it's not even like shaped in a way that would connect if it was a consistent line. So I have to fix it or it's not going to make me happy when I have to go post it. And then I'm going to try and fix it later and then I'm going to muck it up. So there we go. That's nicer. Mm. I had something else. Oh no, it looks like another ad break. Oh wow, it's almost 10 o'clock. Oh my god, I've almost been streaming for three hours. How? I mean, I guess I did draw these pretty much in their entirety. Maybe what I'll do is I'll finish coloring these, but not coloring the line art, and that's when I'll call it. I think it's funny that I started the stream with like, I need to line these two pieces, guys. Don't let me forget. And then I just I did not do that. It's okay. I tried. And that's what is important. There we go. Hmm. Ad break. Everyone in ad hell. Add purgatory. No one in my chat goes to hell. Not the Disney Plus ad. Chat, do you want to see some frog designs? Wait, let me. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I, I don't know if you can hear me or if you're in ad purgatory, but I started making this design uh, because you inspired me to make amphibious characters. Hello, Gummy Robbie. Six ads? Oh, good lord. Okay, good. I'm glad that you see, can see. Okay, okay. I really wanted to make a character that was like an amphibian, but like a vague amphibian. They're kind of... Okay. They're kind of a catfish, right? They're kind of a frog. They're kind of an axolotl. They're just a little bit of everything. And I don't have what their body looks like yet, but I was thinking of giving them, like, if I had to pick a body shape, I wanted to do, like, the, the, like, the fat, the fat frog body. And then, like, little feet that kind of, like, uh, what's the word? Flare out at the bottom. And I do really, I like the little fins in the back. I think the fins are a nice touch. I think I also would want to give them big slappy hands. I was be between slappy hands and like little hands, but I'm biased. I like silhouettes like this. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I'm glad that you like them. Oh, Lemmy does have social media. I won't advertise unless unless that's what Lemmy wants, but I love I love the frog croaks art. I love Apaco Games art. Oh my finger. 
Yeah, that's how I know it's time to go to bed because my finger's cramping. Right? Like something like this. I don't know if I give them a tail though. I think that they would be fine without a tail. Unless I gave them like a fishy tail. Or like this. I love tadpole tails. I think they're very cute. Yes, all, all Lemmy social media is frog croaks. Could give them an ass nub. I like tadpole tails. I think they're cute. I also feel like this is how you can tell that I was a Sergeant Frog kid. Uh, I still think Sergeant Frog is really funny, but I keep trying to watch it with Forrest. And, like, we can't find the English dub anywhere, and I think the English dub is really good. Because that's what I watched, I'm biased. I'm also biased towards tadpole tails. I love giving them to my frogs. They're cute. Thank you for drawing trainer sonas today, by the way, because now I'm designing trainer sonas for me and my BFF. That's so cute. I like sneezed halfway through that. <laughs> and I'm glad you're not resp you were not culpable for the sneeze. That just happened naturally. Uh, and so they got like a little lily pad hat, and then their little antennas go through the lily, hat, lily pad. The only thing is, I was thinking of putting like a little flower on it. Kind of like a pom-pom. Oh, I think that looks nice. Yeah, I'm doing that. What is this creature though? I don't know that. I can't answer all that. Whatever it is, it needs to be fat. It needs to have like a little belly. I think that character designs like that are so cute. Yeah, I like this thing. I don't know what it is, though. Now, I could give it long arms. I kind of like the long arms, I can't lie. It's like a little chimpanzee. Love me a lily pad hat. What are you working on? I honestly, I started sketching this character design based off of a color palette I made uh, on a stream like a few nights ago. And I don't know what I will use it for, but honestly, one of the things I've learned with character designs is if I have an idea, it's better to just make it because you have no idea where it'll lead to and it could lead to something cool. So my idea for this character was like some kind of amphibious uh, pond critter. I also didn't know if I wanted to make them a sharpshooter or if I wanted to make them like a musician. So both ideas were in my head, right? Like a little, either they are going to play like a little guitar or like lute, or they're going to use like a pea shooter. And both of those were in my head when I was thinking of this character. Um, but uh, I just imagined them to live in a bog and if they were a game character and they jumped around, it would make like a splooshing noise. Banjo Lake Kermit the Frog. I bet that's why I was thinking. Yeah, they're like an amalgamation. They're like a they're like an axolotl uh catfish frog. I love axolotls. I think they're funny. I think they're funny. I think it's funny that you can see their organs. Oh, I guess that's also an axolotl tail, isn't it? Yeah, so I wanted to I just wanted to make a little creature. And so I did. I haven't colored them yet because I didn't know where I was going with the design. But then when I pulled them up and let me get excited, I was like, well, now obviously I have to obviously I have to Frogs that have transparency. Yes. I think they're cool. You own a banjo? That is cool. More frogs? More frogs? For the hands and feet. Looking. I... Wait, you're so right with the feet. Hold on. 
Can I draw the... Hello? Oh, I'm on my eraser. I was like, why is it not working? Well, because, you know, that works really well with the... That works really well with the, like, tapered foot. Oh, yeah, I like it. Now that is an amphibian if I ever saw one. I kind of like his little... It looks like a sticky hand. Sorry, pause. Get out of here. We got to make room for toes. I'm pretty sure the song that's playing right now is a PMDOST, which I really love. I'm glad that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is always in every YouTube playlist because the music fucks. I love its feet. It's so funny. I love this little thing. The only grippers I'll support are frog grippers. Well, because I like that they are like dexterous too, right? I think that's the thing I wanted is like a character that has limbs that are dexterous and like kind of floppy and can grab onto things. So and like, I hate to say like sticky, but I wanted a character that like had a texture. I wanted them to be like kind of like wet. So like if they slap onto something, their hands like slap and stick onto it. And let me, it's because you, I saw your frog Sona and I was like, this is so fucking cool. I've been limiting myself to mammals so much and I need to make something that's like wet and slappy because of this now. Of course I have to have like the long like fin ears because I just I like when things have like flowing parts of their design. But I think that I think the rest is very creature. Wet and slappy. I have like three separate frog pirate characters. Frog pirate characters. I like lily pad hats so much I make new characters under them all the time. That's so cool. Creature. See, now I want to draw a full body of it so that I can get the colors down. Obviously, I'm doing like... Like, you've got to be green. It got to be green. And I was thinking pink for the cheeks. And then like a white belly. Also because it looks kind of like a lovebird or like a parakeet, which I think is really cute. The brown is what's tripping me up a little bit. I could do brown for the lily pad, but I don't think it reads as a lily pad then. Hmm. And then the other thing I considered was like brown for the fingers. That might be how I go for it though. And then I did want to make the whiskers white. Maybe brown spots. The brown beasts that are either wet and slimy or rough and evil, I love them. I could make the brown a bit lighter. I really like the palette that I had going there, though. Hmm, 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 hmm. And I am going to have to figure out what to do with that lily pad. Oh, that's a good cho green choice. Damn, I got that right away. Usually it takes me a little while to figure out greens to put together. I might tweak that later, but I think that looks pretty good for now. Harbor? Oh, he's right there. I just heard Harbor sigh next to me and I didn't know where he was. Wait, what if I made the Lotus white so it kind of looks like a... What are those Scottish hats called? The... not a beret, right? Although maybe I'll make it pink just because I don't think that... I think it was... We need another pink. We need a pop. Posture check, thank you. Wait, will I have a frog? A frog that might help you color-wise? Oh, please. I would love help. Oh, milk frog! I love milk frogs. I think they're cute. I do like the blue tongue. Hmm. I was very dedicated to making it look almost bird-like, though. That's the only trouble. The ears, like the fins. I had a Sergeant Frog OC that looked kind of like this too, which I'm now realizing and I think is kind of funny. I've just been the same bitch since day one. Hmm. I 
I like this thing. It looks kind of like a Digimon. It's like if Digimon and Pokemon had a bastard son, and then it was a frog. Terriermon, exactly. Oh, I was coloring the bandages. My bad. My bad. Ooh, I could, like... Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm. Let me take a look at this. Not that. I'm a sucker for prog characters. I just... I really want to practice the shape of this thing. I actually... You know why I'm struggling? I didn't do a black and white design like I'm supposed to. When I always, like, harp on this, that when you draw new characters, you gotta do, like, a black and white design version of them. Because then you can figure out where you want your heart, your dark and light points to be. Because if you can't do that, then how are you supposed to make a color palette, right? Like, how are you supposed to know where you want your focus to be if you can't even think about what the character would look like in black and white? I remember last stream that this song played, I said, is this one-shot music? And someone said, Stardew. And I almost said exactly the same thing again. I was like, is this one-shot? And it's not, it's Stardew. But I've learned now. I like his mouth, though. I think it's cute. Oh, the other reason that I wanted to make a character that looked like this is because its head looks like a little... It's a clover. Would I really be me if I wasn't using the four-pointed character design that I've been using since I was, since I started this whole clover motif? Attachments? Mar Mars and Slate. I'm sorry, I like screamed. I got excited seeing them together. That's so cute. Puppy, that is so cute. Oh yeah, I have water now. I can actually hydrate. If you need frog references or colors or anything, just let me know. I absolutely will. No, no, no. I'm Like I said, I'm glad I remembered to pull it up because I was like, if anyone needs to see this on stream, it's you. And also because now people can be like, hey, what happened to that amphibian character you were working on in stream? And now I won't be able to forget because that would that's happened with so many character design ideas that I've had. I'll be like, this might be a cool character design. And then I just like put it down and I forget about it for the rest of my life. And then I come back to it like years later. I'm like, why did I never finish this? Oh, I forgot. Although I'm almost wondering if I need the fins. I liked the fins, but I didn't know what colors to put on them. And they almost got a bit noisy. I I got... Let me take a look at this. I just gotta think about it. I also think I'm gonna make its body, like, smaller. So that its legs can be longer. Hmm. My nose is running. I don't have tissues. I'm so sorry. My frog tag also recommended for amphibians, reptiles, and bird designs. Ooh. Do y'all have any tips on getting better at character design? Make so many. Make so many characters. And it, here's the thing. You can redesign characters that you have as many times as you want. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I have characters that I have had for years whose designs keep changing and keep updating as my art gets better. You can't really do it if you have like a published comic, obviously, but it is natural for character designs to change as it like as you write the, a story or a comic. Like you think if you think of Pikachu, right? Pikachu started like like this. And then it had like 
the white belly. And I think actually Pikachu's tail tip at one point was also black, as well as this. Like, this is where Pikachu started, and now Pikachu is like... here. Me taking my time and going completely silent to draw biblically accurate Pikachu. The eyes aren't right. I'm just gonna make them close because I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. No. Okay, there we go. That's Pikachu eyes. Like, while Pikachu's design, the elements have pretty much stayed the same, there has been a lot that has changed about Pikachu's design over the years, and like, how its general shape has changed. So, while drawing your OCs, if they change a little bit incrementally... <laughs> now I just imagine a very stretched out Pikachu. Do you walted his white? <laughs> Um, but yes, they basically, if your character design changes because you continue to draw it and you recognize what sticks and what goes away, that's natural. It, uh, the original drawings that I did of Mars, Mars had a white paw, their hair was a little more scraggly, they had an overcoat and a scarf that got lost in redesigns. It's like, it's very normal for as you draw characters over and over for their designs to change ever so slightly to fit what you need them to be as you start working on like the story or game or comic or whatever they're, they're going to be from. But here's the other thing. If you're not a story guy and you just want to get better at drawing characters, there is no limit to the amount of characters you can draw. I don't like how defined I made those toes. Sorry, I need to fix that. There's no limit to the amount of characters that you can make, and there's no limit to the amount of characters you can make of a similar theme. So if you make, like, a clown character, and you're like, that was fun, but I can definitely do a better clown character now that I've drawn a clown and looked at reference art of clowns and, like, got an idea of what it's like to make them, you can just make more clowns. It's fine. Just like I have, like, 500 cat OCs, it's because I get better at drawing, designing cats that look like cats the more I draw them. The dogs are back, the dogs are gone? Is that Meowth with the toes? No, 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 no. This is a character I've been working on a little bit during stream that's like some kind of frog, amphibian, amalgamation, catfish character. Um... I had an idea for them when I did a color palette as an example on a Tuesday night stream, and they've kind of been in my head haunting me all day because I want to get their design down, but I have no idea where it's going, so I'm redrawing it to get my uh, blacks and whites and like my sharper color uh, contrast down before I add color to it. Basically what I'm doing is I'm redrawing the design and I'm going to do it in black and white so that I can see where I want to put my uh, areas of most contrasting colors and then I'm going to try and come up with a color palette for it. Sticky slappy hands. You like, you like the sticky slap hands. Um, actually, this is a very forest core design. Originally Lemmy was the one that I had in mind for it, but I feel like this is something that he would like too. Because I, you know, I have my pear dragon character, I have Lullaby, but I feel like I need to let myself design more creatures because I have been designing furries for so long now, but every so often I have an idea for a character design and I'm like, there is no existing animal that looks like this that I could really do. And so I just let myself do whatever the hell I want, which was what happened with Lullaby, right? I was like, I want to draw a pear dragon, but I don't really like like typical dragons. So I just made a really fluffy failure of a dragon and I think that they're really cute. They're like one of my favorite OCs slash Sonas now. Wait, dis no, there's not a Discord here. I'm sorry. That's just people sending Discord links so that they can share images. <laughs> Long, the Taffy Brothers. No, I, as much as I love 
uh, talking to everyone in chat, I am like terrified of Discord servers. Uh, I like talking to like two or three people max on Discord, and I do not even share my Discord with most people that I know online. It's and it's for a few reasons, right? I don't like being accessible to people. I like having privacy and I like having alone time. So I don't want people messaging me just because I'm online. Yeah, no, no, no worries, cat sauce. Um, the other thing is, I think that Discord servers accidentally become the root of like so much evil because in the same way that when you get a group that starts getting really big, there are inevitably going to be differences of opinion and differences of like taste and what people consider social etiquette. Uh, Discord servers, as they get bigger, start... I'm sorry, Discord servers scare me so bad. Like, you put a whole bunch of people in one place, and they are places where people are meant to socialize, which is, a, it, objectively, it is a good thing. I think that socializing with others is a good thing, right? The problem is, when you, when you put a big, blinky, blaring sign and say, everyone, come here, come socialize here, you're going to get people that don't know how to socialize, and you're going to get people that don't know how to socialize at other people and it's fine to not understand social cues i'm autistic i don't get social cues most of the time but that's why i don't like big group settings where people expect you to understand what they mean if they don't communicate it directly you know and it's so much easier for me to one-on-one -on -one start to understand how someone talks while spending time with them than it is to like be in a group setting where people are all talking in like five million billion different directions all at once also, and this is like just such a terminally online thing, I'm so sorry. Every single call out I have ever seen for a funny man ever, or an artist, or a person online, there is always a Discord server involved. There's always a Discord server. It's never, there. It's, ne it's always from Discord. It's always fucking Discord and Twitter screenshots. It's never anything else. So that's why I'm like, while I understand that it's not Discord's fault. I don't have any desire to uh, challenge and test my luck with a Discord server. I think that having chat all together here is fine, and I appreciate the little community that we have while we draw, but I think if it was like 24-7 monitoring and needing to be modded, I would just straight up die. I think like three hours is the max that I can do with this many people are here. Especially because Discord servers wouldn't just be, like, the people from stream, right? Like, it would also be people from Tumblr. Willow, I lived through Pokeass Discord servers secondhand and the drama was insane. It was scary. It's always... There was just a furry Discord server that could called out because they were being transphobic. And, like, I just... I don't understand... Ugh, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's not... It's... While it's a great way to communicate with, like, a group of friends anything bigger than, and like communities with similar interests like pokemon cards or sanrio or like art fight is a great example of a well-run discord server i think when you start getting like insular communities that are bigger of, than like 100 people that's when it like it, it teeters on the brink of destruction and then as you get bigger and you get better modded servers it goes back to being manageable again No, it, like, it's twice a year. Exactly. I lived through a Discord server of a very popular Undertale AU. That was by Roman Empire. Good lord. The, the, the crazy part is, I've seen at least four different YouTube videos about, like, artists getting called out. And again, always a Discord server at the, the center of it. And funny enough, it was there were multiple ones about Undertale AUs. What if you make the tips of each of the ears pink i was thinking that where like it's white the long part is white and then the ear tips are pink okay i'm gonna make the it's other little ear come around here i like this funny little thing i don't know what it is but i don't know what i'll use it for either but i do like his little i like his little things his little ears I think I'm going to make it, it, it use it pronouns too, because I have a few it pronoun users, but not enough. Not enough as someone that uses it pronouns myself. I want more. Also, I'm going to have it so there's slits on both sides of the lily pad hat. Um, 
but if they are flapped up, they don't have to be like open and visibly open slits. Hmm. I'm just going to copy this color palette from here and then try again. They're playing some creepy noise music in the background. I have art block that's been consistent for only a few cracks for that's been consistent with only a few cracks for years on end for, for reasons, so I'm really grateful I was able to draw and render a piece from listening into the current stream. That's awesome! Oh, this is really cute. I like this a lot. Thank you for sharing, too. Fins are like the scarf, exactly. It sounds like whale noises. I was saying the same thing. It's Kubei's ears! Yes! Kube, Kube or Terriermon. But I like that it's kind of like a little scarf, too. Alright, now we gotta put in the colors. I said I was gonna do black and white, but I still, like, I'm clueless. Still just as clueless as I was before. I do like the pink cheeks, though. Ooh, you know what I could do, though? I could do, like, a... Like a something like this, and then have cream, and then go to pink tips. See, that I think would be cute. That reminds me of like ice creams. Hmm. Now, I don't know if I just want to block make it all pink. I do like the tips being pink though, like there's got to be some pink there. I could make it look like paws almost, where it's like this. I kind of like that, I can't lie. Like how animals will mimic the appearances of prey an predator animals in their appearance. TurboTax ad. We hate TurboTax in this house. Hmm. Alright, and I definitely want these little guys up here. Do I make the lily pad brown? No, no. I could also make like the fingers pink. Kind of like how frogs have those like little ball things on the end of their fingers. I think those are really cute. Like this? Oh yeah, that's cute. I like that. It also adds some definition to the hand so you can kind of see it. Like the, the inklings almost have that. I, I want the brown on it, but I'm just not... I think I've mentioned before I'm not a pattern guy. Like, I don't like spots because I think that spots can get really busy feeling. And not always, because I think that sometimes people can pull it off. I'm trying to... I think, like, I guess my best inspiration I could say is like a tree frog which is funny because I want this thing to live in a pond and pond frogs and tree frogs are not the same thing it's not hard it's hard to not want to make or design fursonas in these streams oh I saw it. have you seen the Netflix show life on our planet it's a very good episode about the evolution of amphibians I have not is this song from Totoro? I can check. Probably is. No, it's not. It's called Snowy Scenery from Shenmue. I don't know what that is. But it's a lot of, like, uh, winter soundtracks all in one big playlist that I linked earlier. I really like this little thing, though. He's funny. It's funny. I'm defaulting to the masculine pronoun as if I'm some kind of Frenchman.
Actually, I say that, but <laughs> the French. Sorry, I actually don't even think that's something you do in French. Opens. Look at my fan art, boy. I. You draw so fast. I'm impressed. I also love it. I love how floppy you've made it. <laughs> Someone who was forced to take French in school, you don't want French. <laughs> I don't think it is. I genuinely don't think it is. I was thinking of something else, but I can't f remember what language now. I don't want to lie about the French. Everything that I say about- everything bad I say about French- well, no. I'll be kind. Eating my art. I like- I'm keeping your art up so I can see it. No, that is something they do in French. You were right to criticize them for that. There's a- but- I was gonna say glowing bones is in as might be in chat and they're French and they're very sweet, so I'm making an exception. It's them and there's so they they've been doing the French translation of Leica's and then someone else has been doing Portuguese. Also, I can't even judge French because Portuguese also genders everything. Chair is feminine, feminine, frog is masculine. Okay, now what green did I use before? Because that green is wrong. Okay, that's better. What a funny little thing. Now they're playing like epic music, movie music in the background. All right, and then the front, obviously the tadpole tail is gonna be like white and gonna have a little green in it, as they do. And I'm gonna do the pink flower. Hmm. Oh, I didn't do the cheeks. Yeah, I kind of like this little guy. I think he's cute. God, I did it again. I think it's cute. You need to get back into Pokemon brain. Creature. You are a creature. <coughs> I thought you were going to make it black and white. I was, and then I literally forgore. I was, and then I was like, what if I just try it again and try harder? I actually do think it worked out. I think I like the pink on the fingertips. Not sure if I like the pink on the ears anymore, though. Because that almost looks a little too fleshy. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. It distracts from it less. I guess if the only... No, no, I'll leave it without. I'll leave it without. The tummy now is striking me as something that needs attention. Whenever you think of using he, look at the Pikachu. Remember, Pokemon, it, it's exactly. I think that's all I'm going to do for stream tonight, though, because it is 1030, and that means I'm about to hit four hours of stream. So if everyone wants to stay around, put a heart on the tummy. I could do that. I am gonna see. It looks like Kale is streaming, and I think I'm gonna raid them. Ugh, I just have to unplug my tablet first. All right. Da -da -da. I think they're playing Yippee Yahoo. You could put like some sort of squiggle because amphibians, you can see their guts. I was thinking that. I was worried it would look too much like Politoed, but I do love Politoed. Oh no. Hmm. It's not letting me raid. I think my thing's not working because my internet connection is borked, so we actually might not raid for tonight. However, 
Thank you everyone for coming, and hopefully we will see you tomorrow at the Lethal Company stream. And if not, that's okay. I will just cry a little bit and be sad forever. <laughs> and if not, then I'll see you all next week. And good night.